Yo, 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 what it do, what it do? Hey, we know you should saw that fresh new intro. Wasn't that shit sick? Well, we couldn't agree more, guys. Right, we just collaborated with our boy Omar at Sun City Vibes to help create an intro that would take our podcast to the next level. Do you need help with your video editing and content creation to help elevate your business to the next level? Well, Sun City Vibes has you covered without a doubt. Yeah, that's right, guys. Whether it's a logo reveal, a music video, drone footage, or even t-shirt printing, guys, hit up Sun City Vibes for quality work and affordable price. Shit, Omar even made us a sick ass hat. Look at this. It's a fresh Fresh. ass hat. Fresh. Shit's fresh. Fresh. So yeah, guys, go help support those that support us and hit up our boy Omar and tell him Chris and Misa sent you from the podcast and help support a local El Paso business today. Let's go. Yeah. Three, two, one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. As always, guys, co-host of the podcast, Mr. Misael is with us today. Yo, yo, yo. What it do, what it do, what it do. In their producer chair, our boy Joe is back. Say what's up to the podcast, What is up, everybody? Hey. Hey. It's Friday. It is Friday. (laughs) It's Friday. And he just takes a massive swig of his beer. Great. I love it. That's actually your beer, but... Energy's great so far, Joe. And yes, that is my beer, you bastard. Hey, you didn't give me time to go get any. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Conversing with Chris and me to the podcast, episode 143. We have a very, very special guest. His name is Mr. Daniel Villegas. Uh, he was somebody who was wrongfully convicted of capital murder back in the day. And he's here to tell us a story about it. So say what's up to the podcast, Daniel. What's up? What's up? Hey, Cheers, welcome, brother. Man, welcome. Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys. <clears throat> we have a tradition. Unlike any other, it's called the cracking of the celebratory beer. And it sounds like this, Mr. Villegas. Cheers to you, brother, for being here. Thank you, guys, everybody, for watching. Joe, for being here. Blue, for keeping these things frosty, my guy. And Misa, that red headband looking good as always. I'm going to indulge you guys. It almost got me in trouble right now. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So for you guys who who might not know, Mr. Villegas has uh, a story that is... uh, A nationwide, worldwide story that has been, uh, you can see it on YouTube, you can see it all over the internet. Um, It's a a crazy story. Uh, I think Mr. Villegas here uh, has probably one of the most unique stories that we've ever had on this podcast by far, I would say. Yeah, by far, probably. And um, yeah, so let's uh, let's get into it, Daniel. But uh, real fast, uh, I just want to thank you, man, for being here today. Um, and you actually, uh, you know my cousin David. You actually chilling with him at the Chihuahua game. Who doesn't oh, no. know? Yeah. David. He knows David. Oh, yeah, Jesus. he knows David. Bro. We have picture evidence of him with David at the Chihuahua game <laughs> a, few, a few days ago. And let me just say this: drinks were had. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, okay. if you were David. Yeah, uh, you're, you're <laughs> really good. I think I think I think like ninety percent of our guests know David. Somewhere. Yeah. Dude. So David is my cousin. Shout out to David. Give him a fucking round of applause, me so. It's a David. And a round of applause for you as well. Uh, thank you for uh, for answering when I when I hit you up. I know I think our boy Omar from Sun City Vibes had reached out to you yeah. as well. Uh, so shout out to Omar. Um, he's one of our sponsors on the podcast. So we really do appreciate him. Uh, you know, reaching out to you, and uh, we just wanted to thank you for being here. Uh, you came all the way from the far fucking east side. Uh, you drove all the way uh, with no traffic, surprisingly on a Friday. Uh, so yeah, man. Thank you. Well, have you seen his truck, here. bro? He fucking just went over the yeah. truck. <laughs> That's <laughs> what it was. Bro, his truck. <laughs> you have like the biggest truck I've ever seen by far. I was like, God damn, is that a fucking monster truck, bro? Shit is huge. That's son. how he got here quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they went over the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Dig over the mountain. But yeah, man. So so what are you, what are you up to these days? I know we were talking off uh, off mic. You recently moved back from El Paso. You were out in Panama City. So before we get into your story, just kind of tell us what's going on with you as of now. As of now, I'm just um, I'm working for uh, Proclaim Justice. So what I'm doing now is. Uh, I'm doing uh, post convention uh, c- uh, conviction cases, <laughs> yeah. but uh, so what we do is we find people who we think are innocent. We look at their cases and stuff, and then if we feel that they do uh, you know, that they are innocent, then uh, we'll pick them up, and then we'll 
try to get them home. Okay, nice, dude. So you're trying to facilitate kind of like your story in the lives of other people that kind of were yeah. like in similar situations to what you went through. Exactly. Yeah. And then the, the thing I love about this organization as well is that they don't just like take you out. You know, like you don't just, they don't just help you get free. And you know, then once you're free, like, all right, there you go. You know, they, they help you uh, get back into uh, society. You know, they help you with, uh, you know, financing. They help you get your mind right. You know, they help you with all kinds of things so you can be a productive citizen. You know, because they know that, you know, being locked up for so long and then coming out to a whole different world and stuff that you're not going to understand nothing. So they're also there for you for that, too. So right. that's what I love about them. And not many organizations do that. You know, they either take you out or they get organizations that help people once they're out. You know, but it's not like this one is both. Right. And that's very important for people when they come out to be able to stay out, right? And oh, have yeah. that support where, like you said, uh, you came out, you're like, dude, I don't know nothing about fucking no debit cards. I don't know anything about, you <laughs> in know. In some ways, it any, can be harder anything. for somebody to be out, you know, than fucking, than to be in, you know. It's just because, you know, they're out in the streets, they don't know how to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's wild. Okay, so where would you say, like, obviously this is your story, right? I've done, I watched a bunch of Fucking, I was watching trial proceedings all day yesterday. <laughs> That's why you left work uh, early? Today, I left work early to fucking come watch some trial proceedings. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but whatever, like, uh, this story is very interesting. And so, like, I wanted to ask you, like, as a person that went through this single, hand, like, firsthand, like, where would this story start for you? Obviously, it starts in 1993 uh, with the shooting of two people in the northeast of El Paso. But where does this story start for you? Like, where would you take people back to? To tell this story, you know, it, it all depends on who I'm going to tell it to, you know, because uh, some are going to they're going to need to know it beforehand, and some in the middle, you know, because you got, you know, like I, I talked to a lot of um, uh, probationees and all that, right? I talked to, uh, you know, uh, I'll talk to, uh, you know, I even do like uh, I was on uh, Judge Bonnie's court, you know, I, I was on her Phoenix program, you know, a few times, not just once, and uh, I've been in different courts, you know. And I talked to their probationees and all that stuff. I'm also working with Christina Montes in that law firm. You know, you talk to, uh, you know, I was doing her criminal cases. So I'm the one that's talking to the clients as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, being that, you know, I've been where they're at, you know, it that's what, you know, it, it helped me, um, you know, it helped me teach them comfort. But every one of them were on a different stage. So, you know, some of them I had to tell them from the beginning some of them are from the middle, and some are already screwed. So I had to tell them, hey, what's going to happen? What you're going to look forward to when you get on that chain bus? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So it all depended on, you know, who who I was talking to and about what. Right. And so I guess it's it's very it's very true what you said. I mean, depending on who you're talking to, where they're at in their case, you're kind of going to give them guidance on what th they can expect. Uh, but let's go back to this this shooting that happened, right? Uh, this is in 1993, a different El Paso, right? A way different oh, yeah. El Paso. We were talking off mic uh, earlier. Me and Misa were three years old when this happened to you, <laughs> when this whole shooting yeah. went yeah. down. We this house wasn't even old. built yet, probably. Right. And so we're talking about Northeast El Paso in the early 90s, El Paso that might have more gang activity back then than it, than it does now. Obviously, the Northeast has cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but this, this, this shooting stems from a, I guess, a... A kickback, maybe a party somewhere in on the northeast, and uh, four kids uh, are leaving, and uh, there's a drive-by shooting, right? And mm -hmm. and two of the kids are uh, fatally shot. Um, two of them are are survived, and and they play a key element in in your story as well as how it progressed and everything. Um, but what do you remember about that night? Like, obviously, you weren't there, right? But like, what were you doing that day uh, when all this happened? Me, I was. Um I had got, uh, <laughs> it's one of the most embarrassing stories, you know, uh, at least from the beginning part. Because what happened was I was supposed to meet with this girl named Helen Galvan, right, at Boomerangs. It was, uh, you know, the movie theater and they had like, uh, you know, the pool tables and all the video games and shit, you know. You know, back like in the 80s and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The video games play where you go and play actually. Like an know? arcade and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it had the fucking, you know, Mortal Kombat, the real one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the OG yeah. Mortal yeah. Kombat, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, you know, we have, like, yeah, you could play like six pairs on that bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it's crazy. That, so, you know, so I was supposed to meet her there, but there was another girl that I was uh, talking to, right? Her name was Vero Ramirez. And she had like real strict parents. 
like Catholic parents that were real strict, and then she had five brothers. So they had this chick on lockdown, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, like, the only times that the chick can get out, you know, I would diss everything and try to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, That's the only chance you have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny, so dude. when she told me she was going to go there, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, man, I'll meet you there. And I'm forgetting I already had another day, right? Damn. So that's why in the beginning, that's where we're at. You know, I was kind of like going between the girls. Like I'll have my friends over here talking to this girl over here and her friends. And then I have my other friends over here talking to this girl and her friends. And I'll just like be bouncing back and forth. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to the restroom. And then <laughs> after that, I was like, man, it's getting too hectic, man. I'm going to yeah. get popped. You know what I'm saying? So I got I to gotta go ahead and get Vero and get her the hell up out of here, man, mm -hmm. so we can be alone. So that's what I did. So I went with Vero to uh, Village Green Apartments. And then uh, from there... We stood there into that because uh, it was a, uh, it was when Malcolm X uh, was coming out. They were in the movie theaters. It was a, uh, that that one with um, uh, what's that guy's name? Denzel uh, Washington. That's how yeah when he played him. So once that movie was over, we went back to um, to the movie theater because her their parents were gonna come pick them up, right. you know. So then they picked them up, and then we went back to Village Green. And then one of my one of my friends, man, he was telling me he was gonna babysit. And, you know, so he was like, yeah, I'm going to babysit, man. We'll order some pizza. And, and uh, you know, the kids are already asleep. He was like, we just got to kick back here and, and wait for, you know, for the mom to come home from the club. So we were going to go up there and, you know, smoke outside, you know, get stoned and then, you know, watch some movies inside and then eat pizza or whatever and go outside and get stoned again, right? That was that was a whole night. That's what exactly what we did. Sounds like a fun night, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does. It sounds like a chill night to me. Yeah, that's what we did, you know. So it was all good. And then when we went home... You know, it, 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 it ne this never came out or nothing, but, you know, uh, my house had got shot up around that time. You know what I mean? So they they had uh so when I got to my house and shit, it got shot up. And then one of the neighbors called the cops. The sh cops showed up and then uh, he was out there looking for the for the shell the casings and all that. And I was like, shit. And he was telling me, was, well, you guys know what happened? I'm like, no, we we're like five blocks up the street. We just heard the shots, you know. So, you know, he made a report. He took off. And that was that night. That same night. That was that same night, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so you were, how old were you at this? You were 15 or 16? I was uh, 16. You're 16, right? Mm -hmm. And you grew up in what part of the Lower Valley? No, no, not no, Lower Valley. No, no, no. Northeast. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're uh, Northeast. By that Walmart, right? The big yeah, yeah. Walmart? We're like Devil's Triangle and all right. that right there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's uh, Devil's Triangle, PBHs, and uh, what's that, uh, you know, Logan Heights and all that area, you know, FDR area. <clears> you know, that's, that's all where I grew up at right there. Okay, that's so that so you're from the northeast, right? Yeah. Okay, I don't know why I thought you were from the lower valley. I don't know why. Because my cousin from the lower valley. Your cousins from the lower valley. Yeah, okay. my cousin David, the one right. that the one that got the right, the, the, the one that, that caused this whole <laughs> fucking thing. Okay, I was like, I know somebody was yeah. from the lower valley. He didn't okay. really cause them, but yeah, the yeah. one they arrested okay. first. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, and so like like in Northeast at that time like uh like shootings were like like they're common right they would oh, happen yeah, all man. the time that time you know it, it, in that and in, in in them years you know it wasn't the football player that was popular you know they 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 would just be like you know it was the gangster who was popular back right. then you like, know who was the biggest was, gangster and all that you know that that, that was what was glamorized back yeah. then like who was the the toughest guy like who could get the most girls things like that right yeah okay so uh, right, how bang, how hard he can gang bang and all that you right, know, right, right, that right. was the that was the style back then okay. I mean, that was when colors and all that American me and all that so everybody had that type of mentality yeah. you know that. You know, that gangbanging mentality. Where you from? I said, you know, everywhere you went. In the Northeast, I ain't going to lie, man. You can't walk from Roanoke to Dyer Street, you know, without getting mugged for your fucking baseball cap, you know? Because as soon as somebody sees your baseball, or you see, you know, back then we all had them Nike Cortez, you know? Yeah, so they see you with the, with the suede Cortez mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, shit. It's jacking time. It's like, hey, what do you got right there? What size you got? And you get <laughs> jacked, you know? And Fuck. you get jacked for your shoes. And then later on the thing, you get jacked for them shoes. And then you jack somebody else for their shoes. And it's just like a never ending Until you get them back eventually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All worn out. Right. All worn out. Yeah. You're like in a, uh, the toy store, you know what I'm saying? I put my freaking initials on the bottom of Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that way you know these are mine, bro. That's funny. <laughs> That's crazy. So, like... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Permanent marker. <laughs> So you said like you would like like, like you would like to you like to smoke you guys would yeah. get high and, and stuff but what you guys weren't like 
You guys weren't really like fucking like hardcore criminals, right? You guys were pretty chill kids, right? I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. In that crowd, everybody, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't like, you know, you had your hardcore criminals and, and you had your lowercase criminals. Everybody was together. Right, right. You know, so, it's a hood, dude. Everyone's yeah, there. Yeah, everybody right. there. So it, it wasn't, you know, you wasn't diverse. I guess, I guess what I was trying to get at is like you weren't someone that had like a history of like violent, like, like things like getting into like a, a lot of fights and stuff or was that kind of like yeah, part that, of the that, deal back in the day yeah i was known for always getting into fights uh, <laughs> always I, I was uh but i was always known as a jokester too you know i was right. that i was that uh that that funny guy that just that just fought a lot because he just did he just was just just he, to do it yeah he just pushed people to their limits right because you know, i would put pranks on people you know i'll be the dude that would jump off a fucking truck to do a black flip, you know, yeah. right. just to try I can do it and then break my fucking ankle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> be like motherfucker, and then act like it's not broke. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Walk away. He's, He's all walking it off. Walk yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Know, so that's what I was like. You know, so I would always get into, you know, but I always got into trouble for that, you know. Right. Yeah. So, so I'll go for it, dude. No, no, I was just gonna ask. So, um, so when soon after, you know, you said that night. So you, you go home, you, you know, you go to bed. When, when did you hear about all this shooting or, or when did it come up? It came out in the paper because uh, there was a, a another friend of mine, right? Uh, his aunt used to do the paper out. So uh, he came to our house in the morning one day. I can't tell you if it was like 10 days or the next day. I, I don't remember exactly when it was. But it was on the newspaper and he came and uh, he was showing us it. He was like, oh, man, look, they, did, they killed these dudes. But... um. The thing that, that that he was showing it to us is because it wasn't so much the shooting, right? Because we were used to shootings back then. It was just because these dudes weren't gangbangers. Mm. So that's what the big story was about. You know what I mean? The, the right. guys the, that got hit the, weren't there. Right. They know, weren't in that they life. Were, right. They weren't in that life. You <laughs> they know? were just so like. That's why everybody was like, what the fuck? You know? So that so that's what kind of made it a big deal is that like it was a, uh, these guys were innocent not in the kids. scene, you know, like innocent. Well, everyone's kind of innocent in a way, but. Uh, they like you were like you said they weren't out there gang banging. Yeah, so it was just like normal people getting getting shot at, and and in a way like in a drive by, it's kind of like it's more concerning that way. You know, mm -hmm. it's like these guys are getting gunned down for nothing. Um, and exactly. So, and so that's kind of like where you feel like there was like like pressure there for like the media and like oh, yeah, for, on the police, like way. hey, we got to fucking solve this. Yeah, well, oh, you yeah. have a lot of eyes on on the case, of course. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay, and so. That night, these two, the two kids get shot. Two of them survive. Um, there's a, 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 a car that is described in, in, a, in a confession statement that was signed by you. And then there's a car that is described in a witness statement later on as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this car, they, you know, they do the drive-by, they dip out. And um, eventually, these, the police have to start, you know, they, they don't have really much evidence from what I saw. So now they have to start looking for confessions, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how did your name get brought up to in in this and then go into the story of your of your cousin and how he got kind of like looped into this and how that ultimately brought you in that's a crazy part right there because it's a uh, like my cousin was from the lower valley right you know so um he didn't um you know that he was from a different area from where we're at the northeast so i i don't know how they got his name still. That's where I'm still confused at. How did he, he was. And then another thing that's confusing too is that, all right, um, the, I, and I'll, I'll get into it, but there's a guy named Rodney Williams that right. was arrested with me, right? And um, David remembers seeing this guy when they're arresting him. Like at the station? Like they're yeah, getting like brought they're, in they're, together? They're passing right. each other right. up, you know what I mean? Uh, handcuffed, you know? And so... You know, it's crazy to say that, you know, because uh, we were thinking because when we're on the phone and we're joking around with David that, uh, you know, it's, it's friends were the ones who called the cops or, or crime stoppers to get a reward because they heard us joking or whatever. Right. Because uh, I don't know how if David told him or what. But the thing that's crazy about that is even if they say that David were or they overheard us. Right. They wouldn't know who Rodney Williams is. Right. Yeah. Right. How did his name? Come yeah, out? and he's a black guy too. Right. You know, and these guys at Lower Valley, you know, it's all Hispanics and stuff over there. You know, it's all Mexicans and stuff. So, you know, they're not gonna know who this guy is. So, how the hell did they have these two do at the same time? That's the thing that I can I never can make sense of that. But for somehow or another, they got David right. Right. 
So when they get David into the into the police station, they're telling them, they're like, hey, man, you got to come in here for a phone harassment charge. And he had just got into a, like a, a car wreck in a truck, right? And then uh, what happened was when the truck got, uh, everybody dipped on that dude who <laughs> was driving the truck, and then he got arrested, so he had a grudge against everybody, right? <laughs> so they had they like had a phone harassment charge, they were saying, against that guy. But when he goes to the station, it, it was for the capital murder. And so that when they start beating him up and all that, and then and then he tell them that I told him about that joke, and then that's when they came for us. Okay, so backtrack a little bit. Your cousin, uh, you had your cousin had spoke to you on the phone, and he asked you about the shooting that happened. No, no, we just because David is a he was like a uh, you know he's a he was a like a like more uh, nerdy, right? Innocent and shit. Yeah, and right. so. You would always tell him, like, I remember one time he told him, uh, you know, I said, hey, man, we joined the gang. And he was like, you know, a police officer came to my school today, and he said it's only 70 or 30% of real people who say they're gang members are validated. And I'm oh. like, he goes to statistics and <laughs> yeah. shit, right? I'm like, what the fuck? I, I lost you at 30%, bro. <laughs> you know? But uh, so we would always put shit on him like that, you know, just to see his reaction and shit. And um, it was just a... Uh, I don't know, man. It was one that cost me a shitload of years, you know? I didn't think it was <laughs> yeah. going to be like that. Yeah, because you, like, you told him that you were the one that did the shooting, right? Essentially? That's, yeah. Okay. And so he's in the, he's, uh, in, he's your, the same age as you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's a 15, 16 year old in a uh, police command station being inter interrogated by a detective, right? Yep. And he's the one that, the it, same one I had. Right. It, the same detective. The same, and this, the same one. This same detective is, he's prevalent in this whole thing mm -hmm. because not only does he interrogate you guys, he Jesse also uh, interrogates Jesse Hernandez, who was one of the guys yeah. that was like, shot right, at. A survivor. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get into that a little bit more once we talk about the trial and all the facts and everything. But so essentially the way it really starts is your cousin, David, tells these guys, hey, um, my cousin told me that he's responsible for the murder. Mm -hmm. Right. And boom, here comes. Man, it's just to start with, <laughs> man. Like, <laughs> how, does, like, how does even David, like you said, how like, does David how did he get in it? You yeah, know, like, like Rodney like, get into all this. Like I said, because, like, I mean, David would know who, who Rodney is because right. David, even though he lived in the Laura Valley, he would always stay at my house. So you know you, what I mean? Yeah. He would, because he was like a, an only child for a long time. And then when he finally had a, you know, when they had a sibling again, is uh, my uh, my uh, my cousin when she was born, Andrea? Then you know he was already in his teens, so you know they weren't really. So it wasn't like uh, you know if you had a sibling that you grew up with, right, you know, right. so like two years apart and yeah, shit. So yeah. So David different. was always at my house, like all mm -hmm. summer, the weekends. You know, he's always coming to our house. You know, it's very rare that he will stay in the Lower Valley in the weekend or the summers or you know vacation time right. or in school. He'd always be at my house. My house was like the gathering center of everybody. You know. We used to call it the runaway shelter. The runaway. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Chris's crew. All, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the runaway hit, uh, schools, people were always at the house and shit. We'd always be out there fucking doing all kinds of stuff with them. <laughs> you know, so it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, we even had a we even had this homeless dude, man. He'd always go <laughs> to our house and shit, and you know, he'd do his clothes and shit. He even bring like <laughs> a box of pizza, and we let him wash his clothes. You know, oh, hey, no, hey, hey, he'd hey. be washing his clothes and shit. We'd get stoned with him, you know, talking and <laughs> shit, and, and then you. You know, he take off, man. But he always brought <laughs> a, a great box of, He always brought, like, pizza and shit, you know? <laughs> that's crazy. So okay. that's the way it was with us back then. You right. Know, that we had, like, an open house kind of thing, you right. know? Right. Yeah, yeah, very welcoming, very, like, yeah. anybody. And like you said, your homie, like, lived with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like a lot of times, like, I guess that was more common, like, back then. Like, parents were, like, more like, all right, you know? But, like, a lot of people, like... Don't let just like random kids just stay yeah. at their house all or the time. Or a homeless you know guy do laundry, then. right? Oh, no. <laughs> but I think I think I think that's because like of the times, like back then, I think things were a little more chill. My mom walks in the room. Who's that naked dude in the in the back? <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing his laundry. He's doing laundry, uh, no, mom. Grab a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You got a naked bird guy in the living room. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! The runaway house. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so that so oh, yeah. <clears throat> after your this shit happens to your cousin, right? Does your cousin like leave the police station and then call you up and be like, yo? So, uh, Watch by, out way, by the way, I just kind of told <laughs> hey, these guys, I just told these guys you can run right, somebody, right. <laughs> so you might want to run. Right, 
<laughs> Does he give you like a heads up or is that like, and obviously it's in the nineties. Oh, we don't have cell phones or whatever, but yeah. like, does, is there any uh, communication from he, him? He sent me a, he sent me a, a, a message text? Through, the, through, a, through the beeper and shit. 911. Run. Run. I mean, he couldn't though, you know, because right. I guess they still had him hostage when they went to go get us, you know? <laughs> So, so they, do you do you remember that day getting integ- um, interviewed or interrogated? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That's that day never gonna you know, forget. Uh, you never forget that day. So they roll up on you at your crib. Are you at your home when they come to get you, or where are you? Yeah, I'm at the um, when, shelter. Um, well, it was crazy because okay, so when we go to we went to the Villa Green Apartments, right? The day I got arrested, um, it was like I don't know, probably like. Mm, I want to say probably around 12, right? So we get to these apartments, and then um, we're going to go play basketball at Irvin. You know, it's, it's going to be a group of us. So everybody's meeting at Village Green. And so we see these detectives right right, right by us, right? And when I looked at them, I'm like, oh, shit, they're going to raid some house. That's what I thought, you know, because all the time they're raiding different crack houses in them apartments. So I'm like, fuck, someone's going to get um, busted. So we all met up, and then we went to uh, Urban High School, and then we're, we're shooting hoops and shit. And then um, the detectives jump over the wall, and then they get Rodney Williams and, uh, and Leslie Williams. That's their two brothers, right? And so they're like, oh, you guys, Mr. Uh, you guys matched this description, man, of this robbery that just happened at the, at the motel. So we go ahead and kind of get into it, the cops. You know, you know, all black folks look alike, all this, right? So then they take them away. So then we go back to Rodney's apartment and tell his mom, hey, they just arrested your boy saying they just robbed the motel. Right. So she's like, oh, what the fuck? So she jumps in the car and takes off. And then, um, so we stood waiting for them for hours and hours, man. And it was, the sun was already going down. And I was like, fuck this shit, man. It's already, we'll just find out what happened with them tomorrow. So we go to my house. So when we get to my house and shit, it's already about, uh, it's expecting to be the news time, right? About 10 o'clock. And so I get the phone from, uh, I get a phone call from Helen, right? And this is a crazy thing that you guys are going to freak out about, right? But it's true. So I'm on the phone with Helen, right? And she's talking to me about that night that these dudes got killed. But she was accusing me. She was like, hey, they told me that that girl met was there. And I'm like, no, man, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what that's you're talking co- about. That's my cousin, you know. <laughs> yeah. She's from Mexico, you know. So, we can, you know, it's, it's, they got fam strongly traditions over there. You know, you always have to make sure that the girls, you know, she's not facing the street and you have to yeah. hold her hand yeah. and all that. And it's a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> She's my cousin. She's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so, she calls, she, so she calls you up to give you some shit like, hey, I, I know you were with that other girl that night when we were at that the, the place you said you guys were yeah, chilling boomerang. at. Caught you boomerang. sleeping, man. Yeah. <clears throat> well, no, like he said, he was like, that one girl was free that night, so he was like, everything's a go with her. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't care what plans I made. That shit's getting canceled. <laughs> okay. So she calls you up. And she She's giving you shit, and you're yeah. like, yeah, my cousin, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm doing look. all that. Right, right, right. You're doing uh, damage control. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> Like, no, I love you, baby. Girl, Joe Joe for me. Right. Yo, Joe knows a lot about me, that. Yeah. Joe knows I'm, a I'm lot taking notes right now. Yeah. When he said, "Keep him yep. at the same place." Yeah. Is he? <laughs> he has a PhD in damage control. You know, yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you, gotta, you always gotta hit him with the nah, baby. You know, it's just I was just playing. You know, I love you. <laughs> it la. just it just looks so like much like you. <laughs> <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> oh shit! Oh. So. No, yeah, so when we're talking about that, the cops break the door down. And then they're, they're, they come in there and they arrest my homeboy, Marco. They're like, hey, you know, you're under arrest for capital murder. So when they drop him and they handcuff him, they're walking out. I, I stopped the last detective, who was Marquez, right? And I tell him, hey, man, where's the search warrant for the guy? And so he's like, what's your name? And I'm like, Danny Vega. So he, boom, he fucking tackled my ass down. And he tells me, oh, you're under arrest too for capital murder. We've been looking for you all day as well. Then I'm like, what the fuck? So then I don't know what the fuck's going on. So they're telling me, you know, what were you doing on this, then this, and this, and this date? You know, it was two weeks. And I was like, shit, I'm always fighting on acid and getting stoned. So I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck I did yesterday. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Two weeks from now. 
So, but it's crazy that I didn't realize, you know, while they're asking me these questions, I was just talking about what the fuck I that was doing. That night was, yeah. yeah with yeah, Helen, yeah. you know, that's what, but <laughs> it didn't click. It didn't click, it didn't click, it didn't click you know? So, that, like I said, it's kind of crazy shit the way everything kind of went down, man. It was kind of like, like a perfect storm in some way. Yeah, when, like when it a predestined to, to some right. crazy shit, you know? Yeah, I mean? it's almost like it was, dude. It's you almost know? like this was like in a weird fucking way, like a destined thing to happen in a crazy fucking oh, way. Yeah. Because so, okay, they arrest you, right? Uh, they Do they take you like at any point? Do they tell you what you're being charged for? Yeah, like formally, what, like oh yeah, so okay. they got me. They were like, you, you know, we were so you're being, you're under yeah. arrest for capital murder, mm-hmm. and this is two counts of capital murder. Like, oh, yeah. okay, so they so so you know, kind of at that point, like okay, this is kind of like a real serious fucking yeah. deal here. Like I'm in some fucking hot water. Yeah, uh, and so, God, so okay, so. They take you to the Northeast Regional Command Center. Where did they no, take they you? No, they take me to uh, the the what's the one right here, man? The the headquarters Osborne right here. Headquarters. No, on, uh, Osborne. Rainer, on no, no, on Rainer. Oh, Rainer. Oh, Rainer. Rainer. Yeah, yeah, Rainer. Yeah, they took me to that one. It's a cap. It was a cap. Uh, Crimes was, against persons. Yeah, the that's their the investigation or unit is out of that office, right? Yeah. Okay. So they were taking me there, and the dude's telling me he's gonna put me in jail, and I'm like, yeah, my own sixteen. So me and him are going back about the age, you know, right. and we're like, he's like, no, it says here that you're 18, whatever. And I'm like, no, no, I don't give a fuck what it says there. I'm, I'm, I'm a 16. minor son. I'm a juvenile. So we're going back and forth of that. And then he tells, so I tell him, I'm on a, I'm on probation. I'm on a first offender program. And then so he's like, well, we're going to find out. So when we went to that police station, they found out that I was a juvenile. And then that's when they realized they fucked up. Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's when they try to clean up their act. Yeah, but they they had fucked up from the jump, you know. What right, I mean? dude. Yeah, dude, you can't be just fucking arresting juveniles like that. That's a no, big. No, they fucking, thought I was eighteen. Right, dumbass. And yeah, and then they, they're treating you like a fucking like adult. That's like like super against the law. So okay, so they have you in the room. Obviously, like a. Uh, there's a term for these like investigators, right? They're called closers. They're the ones that yeah. close the case. That they're gonna be the ones that say, "Hey, we got we got the guy. Here's the, whatever the statement or whatever." And they're interrogating you, and obviously you're probably shitting your fucking pants at this point. You got these. How how old were these detectives at the time? Were they were like in their forties? Uh, yeah, I probably want to say you know probably a late thirty, early forties around there. Right, and they're mm-hmm. in, and they're in there, and they're fucking. Are they like? Uh, are they like fighting with you? Or are they like? Intimidating yeah, they, what you? they do? They got me handcuffed like a chair like this, right? right? And they got me handcuffed, and then this dude he had a ring like my ring, right? Right. But it was like a class graduation ring, right? And so what he'll do, he'll flip it, and then he'll fucking slap the shit on me with that bitch. Boom, oh. or he'll hit me, boom. You know what I mean? And that's how he was getting me. He was like, we know you did this shit, punk motherfucker. You're going to get fucked by him. And, you know, he was just kept slapping me with that fucking what? ring with there. And he was like, we're going to take you to the fucking desert and and rape you and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, 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 no, whip you and then take your clothes off and make you walk back butt naked and then pick you up again. And then he was like, we're going to put you in a tank full of fat you know, whatever, you know. So he was like, you know, you're going to get raped. And he just like, they just kept on there slapping me and telling me. And I'm thinking to myself, like, they keep telling me about that date. And then what made it worse was they have the stupid badges, right? So you got to think about a fucking badge. And that stupid badge is fucking <laughs> hitting you in the fucking face. Shit. And you can't do shit, right? So right. you're like, you know, I'm just He's a gangbanger. You know what I mean? These motherfuckers can kill my ass and, and, and I'm fucked. Who are they going to fucking believe? A gangbanger or some fucking goddamn uh, uh, Dick Tracy motherfucker, you know? <laughs> So you know how long you, you was know, this? That how up. long was this shit? Going? It was for hours, and then after a while, and I was and like I said, the thing that was freaking me out the most was I was like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" You know, and I'm trying to remember that day. Like, right. What day is this? What day is this? And then I'm thinking all kinds of shit goes through your head. You know, you even start right. thinking, "Did we do something?" Don't remember. You know, all everything in your mind right, goes right. in your head. You know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. There's a point, right? That like in your head, you start thinking like, "Well, did I do it? What?" Did I re- like? Did I black out? Did I fucking? Right. You know what I mean? Like, you, you can kind of feel your brain turning against you almost in a way, right? Yeah, you can. I mean, it it fucking it sucks. Like, it, it's torture. literally a fucking mental paralyzation. It's torture, you know? yeah. and you kind of look at like go in um in a state of shock, survival mode. So it's just you're just really just starting. You know, like when you start getting a like a tattoo. You know, when you get a tattoo at first it hurts, but after a while the skin numbs up. You know, that's what it. You get to that point where the, you start numbing up mentally, and you're just like, fuck it, man. Whatever you guys want, man. Here. There you go. So I can get the fuck up out this bitch. Yeah. And so that's how they put you in. Right. You know? And that thing you end up, ended up signing was a 
confession, confession. Mm-hmm. to the murder, right? Oh, yeah. But it was a fabricated confession, right? Yeah, like the, the detective was like, you know, he was like, you know, this and this and this happened. And then he'll look at me. And then I'll be like, yeah. And then he'll type it, you know, okay. And then this and this went down. And so he's he lead, he's leading you yeah, in the exactly. confession, right? For okay. Damn near all the confession, he'll lead me. And set, there was certain parts, you know, in that, that he'll want some answers. And I'll give him whatever fucking came to my mind. Like the car, the vehicle was, I said it was a mid-sized white car. Right? Yeah. And it right. happened to be a big old red car. Right. 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 And now during this time, um, I mean, was, was your mom present? Or was there any type oh, of... Oh, no, no, no. She wasn't there. They pushed her out there. They pushed her out the way and body slammed her ass. Oh. Damn. Damn. So, okay, no, she, no, not I was like, no. I was like, dude, if they did that, I was like, there's no fucking way, bro. Body <laughs> slamming your mom hey, and shit. Oh, and shit. then they arrested her for fucking manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> And then they hit her with an assault on a police officer and shit. She got body slammed. Damn. But, no, but they, they did just push her out the way, you know what I mean? They pushed her out the way and they didn't tell her shit. Because like I said, they thought I was 18, you know what right. I mean? So they didn't tell him shit. They're like, They're yeah, like, yeah, he's shit. on his own. He, yeah, he's yep. gone. He fucked this. He's gone. He's out of here. God damn, dude. Yeah. That shit is fucking crazy. That's scary, dude. And it's just one guy the whole time interrogating, or is there multiple? There, no, there's multiple detectives, but he was the main one. Right. You know, he was the one that was doing everything. All the other ones were just coming back and forth because what they were doing was they're collaborating the story. Right. So, whatever I would make in this statement, they're calling the other police station where the other guys are at, and they're like, okay, you got to change this and you got to change this. So, make him change this part of the statement. So, so all our yeah, so so stories matched. can match up. Right. You know damn, what I mean? That's bullshit, dude. God damn, bro. What the fuck is that? That is some fucked up shit, right? Dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God damn. Okay. And so this is the first time that you had ever been like actually in that type of situation, right? Where you're being interrogated. So you're like you you don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, you don't have you hadn't you didn't get a chance to talk to an attorney. And these guys can like like they fucking make you sign a false like, as a minor a false oh, statement yeah. as a minor. Like this is like a fuckload. Of, this is a fuck. Case in general, dude. Like, oh man, that's the that fucking get go. The, the, the last one, <laughs> man, we had this judge, man. A judge, <laughs> it was his name, man, right? This motherfucker's the one that's supposed to tell you, hey, you know, this is what's happening. This happening. Do you really want to talk? This dude sounded like that dude. I don't know if you guys, you guys might be too young for that fucking movie, man. Uh, damn. If, uh, Fairless Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, we've yeah. seen that movie. Okay, you seen that teacher, man? That's talking up there. Yeah, Bueller. Yeah, Bueller. Yeah. Bueller. That's exactly how this judge talks, but worse. But just like that, right? And he's like, he's just reading the piece of paper, and he said, he don't tell me, do you understand it? Nothing. He just reads it. Boom. Okay, put your initials here. Put your initials there. And then I do it, and then he tells me, all right, go out. Damn. But they're supposed to stop that, you know, and be yeah. like, okay, this do you is understand what, what this means? Do you know what you're right, doing? Right, right, right. You know, you talk to your parents or whatever. You know, they're supposed to be you there. You understand there. Man, what's this, going on. This motherfucker, fellas, beaters, bitch, man, was just <laughs> saying all that shit and then told me to put my initials and then walk my ass up out of there. Yeah, Fuck. Dude, that is crazy. Okay, so now you're in custody, but they found out you're uh, a minor. So they you don't go straight to the jail, right? They no, take I went you to, um, to like to a deal. juvenile, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then there is Who's when- this fucker, huh? <laughs> right here? <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> so so uh yeah, exactly that so they take you to the fucking uh <coughs> the juvie spot and then um is that when you realize like oh shit like like when does it hit you that you sign that you realize like oh fuck i just like admitted to this <laughs> and i didn't do this yeah like you know what i mean sit in? well like um you know me being raised in the Northeast, you know, it's a bunch of military out there, you know, it's a bunch of, uh, you know, military people out there. You're always going to see people with, uh, you know, the uniforms. My family was always, you know, uh, they're always like, you know, Marines or Army, whatever. So we've always had, you know, faith in our system and in in, and in the military. You know, we've, always, we've been raised military, a lot of, you know, a lot of our families and stuff for that. So I always believed in our country, you know. So I thought that, you know, not in America, you know, it'll, it'll get fixed, I didn't think that, you know, even making that statement, that's how that's how naive I was, you know. The I didn't truth think that prevail. I was like, Yeah, we're in America, the truth's gonna prevail, it's gonna be all right, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be good, you right. know. They're gonna find out who did it and then, you know, you're gonna be cleared, you know, because I believed in our system, you know. So it wasn't, you know, for a while, man, till um it was probably after that first trial where I got the hung jury, where it kinda hit me a little bit where I was like, Oh shit, maybe I'm gonna get fucked for this, right. you know. Maybe I'm going to have to go to prison. 
And it was actually after that I did it. Because even, uh, like, right before, like, let's just say it's this weekend, right? And then I go to court on Monday. So let's just say Friday, like today, right? So I'm, I'm with Veto Friday, and I'm going to go to court Monday for this capital murder case. My second time, right? And and we're out there, and I was, you know, I was I was smoking, and then and, and I was taking some shrooms and shit, and I was looking at the sky, and I was like, I don't know, and I turned around, I looked at her, and I said, you know what, man, I, I think... I think I'm gonna get fucked for this case, and I I don't think I'm gonna come back for a while. And she was like, "No, no, 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 you're tripping." And I was like, "But I kind of like, I can't explain it, man. You felt it was it. like a vision, you know what I mean? Like if you kind of see the future for a little bit, and then it takes away, and you're trying yeah. to remember what the fuck you were seeing, you can't remember, right, right, but right. you just know, hey, something ain't something you know, ain't right. Yeah, and it kind of tells you what it is, right? And I'm like, oh fuck. But I didn't think nothing of it at that time, right? And then, um, yeah, man, then they end up convicting my ass, uh, fuck, like five days later, and they ended up giving me a life sentence. So when they convicted me, you know, that's when reality hit, and that's when I told myself at that point, you know, I was like, you know, shit, I'm fucked now, you know, I'm, I'm going to die in prison, so you made up your mind already and there? all that shit, you know? And that's when I told myself, uh, and that's one thing about the detectives that they did. I mean, granted, if they wouldn't have done that shit, I wouldn't have been in the spot. But one thing that helped me in prison was I told myself, I don't give a fuck how hard a motherfucker hits me. I don't give a fuck what the fuck somebody does to me. I ain't going to do shit that I, ain't gonna, that I don't want to do no more. You know, I ain't going to be put in that spot no more like that. Right, where yeah. I'm going to let them break me. I'm like, fuck that shit. So that helped me in prison, you know, because when you go to prison in, in, in Texas, Especially from, uh, you know, being out of El Paso, you know, shit, we're fucking most hated in that motherfucker. We're public enemy number one in there, you know what I'm saying? And we're just a little ass city. We're going against people out of like fucking Houston, Austin, you got Dallas. all these people from everywhere, man. You know, and they got these big cities, man, in the red card, it's 50 to 7 of us, you know what I mean? And then we're hated for everybody. So you, you're going into a, a, an environment like, shit, it's worse than you being a white boy. So, you know? so what uh, what prison did they send you to? They sent me to uh, Brazoria County, and then when I went there, right? So <laughs> we, we go to we go to we go to uh, uh, Huntsville, Texas, right? And then the and then they tell me um, in Huntsville, they're like, I go before uh, the warden, and then you know the the major and the lieutenant, and and then some. It's, it has to be a civilian. It's like what they call a. Uh, uh, it's like a committee, and they decide your fate, right? So I get there, and then they see me, and then you got to think, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm still a teenager, and then they're like, "Okay, you're gonna go to Brazoria County Clemens Unit," and I'm like, "Okay." So then I get out, and then everybody, you know, because we're all in Huntsville, and everybody's gonna get shipped to different prisons. So everybody's asking everybody, "Wait, where are you from? Where are you gonna go?" So I'm like, "I'm going to uh, Brazoria County." Everybody like, "Oh." Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit no fuck you're fucked <laughs> Damn. I'm like what and they're like yeah you're fucked they're like oh man no no are you serious and I'm like yeah it says right here Brazil account cause they give you like a little slip you know yeah. it's cool when you go to your bus and I'm like and they're like oh man you're fucked gladiator for gladiator for and I'm like alright so then when we get to fucking we gotta go through all these different prisons we got to stop here, stop there, stop here, get off of this bus, get on that damn bus. So we finally get to, and then, and then the deeper we go into East Texas, I've always been raised in Chuco, right? So I don't know shit about it. I'm seeing fucking alligators and this humidity is killing me and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Alligators? <laughs> yeah, alligators in that shit. Yeah. You know, they're coming yeah. out the fucking water and just chilling on the, on the fucking yards and shit. You know, in the prison, like in the jester units, you yeah. see them all out there all the time. So I'm like, what the fuck am where the fuck am I going to, man? What the fuck am I at, man? So I finally get to our prison. And then right when we're about to walk in, the, the guard, you know, it's 15 of us, right? And so the guard tells us, he's like, hey man, um, he's putting the key in that big old shit. He turns around, and he says, Look, he said, This is called the burning hell. He said, Welcome to the burning hell. He said, When I open this door, he said, Every one of you motherfuckers are going to get your ass kicked. Half of y'all are going to get raped. And one or two of y'all motherfuckers are going to come out dead in the morning. He said, do not come crying to me or my, or my officers. You shouldn't have done whatever the fuck you did to come here. Welcome to the burning hell. 
Come in with your gloves Damn. on. God so, bless, bro. So, That's the hospitality God. that they give you? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. God damn, Oh, yeah. Dude. Hey, we, then we go in there. What the fuck? We get in there, right? And then, yeah, they, they, they you know, you go to unit classification, that little console, like I tell you. Every prison has them, right? And then they kind of tell you where you're going to go. So they're telling me where I'm going, right? So when I get to the, you know, when I walk into the wing where I'm supposed to be at, I go into the day room. And this dude comes up to me, he's like, where you from, mister? And I'm like, oh, Chuko Holmes. And he's like, oh, those are your people right there. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I walk up to that little crowd where you said, right? And they're like, they're looking at me, and I'm like, I'm from Chuko. And then this dude pops off on me. And st- <laughs> he steals me, right? Oh, wrong guy. And then fucking this other guy comes, and there's three of these motherfuckers, right? And then all of a sudden, this fucking day room, man, just erupts, man. Everybody starts jumping up. And you got to think, man, I just remember fucking when I was going at it, you know, I seen this big old white dude, man, hit this big old fucking swastikas on his chest, right? And, and he's saying, knock that bitch out and fuck him, you know? And then these other dudes are screaming the same shit, like the whole fucking day was saying, knock him out and fuck him, right? So I'm like, like fighting. Knock him shit. out and fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> so we're fighting, right? And then, um, and then that was over. And then, uh, you know, so I started, I was all bleeding up and shit. And then the dude, this little Mexican dude comes up to me again. He's like, look out, little homie. It can be all right, man. All you got to do is bust or fuck. So, you know, bust is pay protection and fucking is being somebody's bitch, right? I'm like, shit, I got life sentence, man. You got me fucked up. So then three more guys came at me, right? And then that shit started again. These motherfuckers get all wild up. They're knock them out and fuck them. And we're going at it again. And then uh, that stopped. And then I see him walking up to me again. And by this time, I'm like literally like just blood. Just like my, my cheek was like almost coming this way, right? And I'm like... And I told him, I'm like, look, I got a lot of sense. Save your bitch ass bread, man. I ain't knocked out yet, man. Come on. Bring it bring on. Him. And then so three more dudes came at me. And then after that, you know, then they were like, oh, man, you, you passed the, the, the heart check. <laughs> 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 and then they tell me. And then so that ain't even the worst of it, man. <laughs> and then so it gets worse than that. So then they tell me, they give me this list, right? And they're like, Look, man, if your Sally does anything on this list, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fight him. You gotta beat him up. So I'm like, right. so I go into the cell where I'm at, and this is big old fucking black dude, right? And I'm like, and then he does three things on the fucking list, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like fuck, uh, fuck, you know? What okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So uh, hold on. There's a few things that we have to. Okay, so. These guys are coming at you in waves of threes, right? Yeah. Kind of like, all right, round one, like Mortal yeah. Kombat style. Like, all right, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you pass that first one, you move up that fucking ladder, yeah. and there's another one. one. Okay, so, like, uh, obviously the guards, are they're not going to fucking step in. They know that this they're is They're promoting happen. that right. shit. Right. If anything, they're probably like, watch this shit. No, yeah. they're the ones right. yelling. Like, yeah, fuck them up, fuck okay, them up. Exactly so, what do. Hey, look you at go this in dude. there. These guys are coming at you. You hear this fucking knock them out and fuck them. That must be the most terrifying fucking thing <laughs> knock anybody out fuck could ever fucking hear. Imagine that. I'm going to whisper that shit to Chris. Hey, Chris, did you Chris me like, I'm not trying to fight. Bro. Just fuck me. <laughs> Bro, but I just give it up. Chris is like, Chris is already taking his pants off. He's Bro. like, all right. Uh, so, one one, yeah, I got eight. I got eight. Uh, Who's first? Who's so, first? Okay, so I'm sure the first thing in your mind, uh, okay. the first thing going through your mind is like, I cannot get knocked out here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I literally. cannot. Like, I have to do everything in my power. I tell everybody, man, I was literally, man, I, I mean, I didn't put that, part, but literally, I tell everybody, I was literally praying in my head while I'm fighting. I'm like, God, I would take an ass whipping all day. Just don't let these motherfuckers fucking knock me out because I'm fucked, literally. You know? <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! He said literally. <laughs> Damn, bro. Oh, okay, just so don't let me knock out, man. I'll so fade you, everything. So you get through, and then obviously, like you go into your cell still all fucked up, or does somebody come and clean you up? No, or, I'm like, all you fucked up. To, I'm trying to, you know, they do little, you know, remedies that they right. got going on, but you know, yeah, it's no infirmary or nothing. Right. So you're fucking still just like. Fucking bleeding, cut, cut up, all fucked up. All fucked up. And then and you then have to like, deal you have to deal right, with man, the boss. Guess, right? The boss in your cell, this big black guy. <laughs> and then his name is Leroy. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Bro. Jesus. Oh, good. So he does three nah. things. He does three things that are on the list, and you just like, do you let it slide at that point? No, I, I, I like because um, you have to fight him now. I told my uh <laughs> you know, I told the the dude that was on the side of me, you know, we're in the cells, right? So I tell him, I'm like, you know, hey man. 
I shoot him a letter and I'm like, hey man, there's <laughs> three fucking things on the list <laughs> and I'm fucked up right now. You know, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So he sends me a letter back and he's like, look, we got what they call a hot pot, right? So these are like little pots that you plug into the wall and then they get them boil and make the water hot. He says, your silly got the hot pot. He said, get the, it's, it was called blue magic. It's what the black people use for their skin, right? Yeah. So when they, so they, cause they can't shave because they give them bumps. Yeah. So he's like, put that blue magic in there and 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 put this syrup that I'm sending you into that hot boiling water. And then when it boils, chunk it at them and just beat them in the head with it. Damn. Oh, yeah. So Just so easy, dude. <laughs> I know, right? God damn. <laughs> so that, that's what I what did. The he's, been there, he's been there for two hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, so you, you actually did that? Yeah. What the fuck? So what I did was fuck. I waited till he passed out, you know, so when he went to sleep. I got the hot pot, put the water in there. How old were you, like 17? Yeah. Damn. And then Dude, I, this is I two years after. it on him, you know? After, so you're like 18, right? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was already going on uh, 18 at that time. Right. Because going on 18. They yeah. sentenced you in 95, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. he's Dude, 18 years old, Joe. Just going into a fucking prison like that, bro. I mean, damn, that's wild. That is fucking stupid, bro. Okay, so and you that throw was day one, right? So you throw, so okay, so Chris would have died in the interrogation room. <laughs> yeah, I would have died on the bus right yeah. over there. So like, just take me to the desert. I would have like <laughs> just thrown myself out on the fucking <laughs> to the gator highway. Yeah, shit. find a gator that's hungry. Like, come get a good meal, baby. Come eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Okay, so you throw this fucking boiling hot water at this guy. Yeah, while he's asleep, I'm sure he was happy, right? <laughs> sure, he was just like, oh yeah. No, like he he. So when I threw it at him, he like you know he woke up and he was like, right when he was screaming, I hit him with it. You know, I didn't even think twice. You know, so I just hit him with it, hit him, with it. and then at the end, I just had that little piece, you know, with that little handle right here. Oh, oh, oh. That I broke. So I was just like hit and like twist, you yeah. know, so I cut him up, you know. And I just did that until until he didn't move. And I'm like, fuck this. You ain't gonna move, motherfucker. Shit. You're six two, two fifty. You got me fucked up. I'm <laughs> You got me <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> you ain't gonna move. God though. bless, bro. What fuck the fuck? That. I can't let him move. <laughs> and then like what happened like the next day or No, at count time, you know, they see that and they you know, they, they, so they handcuffed me, you know, and they hank and then him, they took him to the infirmary and I did like, you know, two weeks in the hole in Solitary. the black box. And then I came out, you know, and then, you know, it was part of the crew then. Bro, oh, God <laughs> bless, bro. So you have to go into prison, fight a fucking couple people, and then they throw you straight into fucking solitary, right? Oh, yeah. God damn. You have to prove yourself. I know, dude, but then you're in solitary for like, yeah, and dude. that shit is like. He had a lifetime. He wasn't going nowhere. No, I know. You but asshole. I was just like, God damn, yeah. this is That's fucked. That's what I thought. You know, I thought I got a whole life. That's I thought true. my whole life is going to be in this motherfucker. That's all I'm going to do is just be this. Bro, I'm just going to learn fuck, the game the bro. way I'm supposed to learn it, you know, because right. I'm fucked. I didn't have no faith in the system. You right. know, I was like, I'm, I'm gone. And God so damn, I just, I, I was going to be the best there was, man. I was going to fucking learn how to shoot dice in the corner and shit, you know. I was going to fucking do everything I can to make a good old hustle right. and, and, and get at it, you know. Okay. So, okay. So fast forward, right? You've been in there like a year, two, three years. Like, what is that the daily, what's the daily like prison life like? Like you wake up, what do you guys have to do? What what do you like? Do they have you working? Like what what's going on? Yeah, like you you uh okay. So my first year, that was a, a gladiator, right? Uh, so what happened was you go what they call the whole squad, right? And it's like you go out to the whole you go out to these fields and they give you grubbing hoses, right? You know what a grubbing hose is? Like it's that it's like a you know it's a stick and then it got this little metal piece right here so you can like you know pick the uh, you know move the shit. Mm-hmm. You'll see it on TV a lot, a lot of prisons and shit. They'll show you what a grubbing hole is. Do I have like these songs y'all will sing? Yeah, exactly. I, you see that? That's it right there. Look at you see that one with the flat end right there? No, right there. Yeah, right to there. the right, to the right, Joe. Oh, come on. No, not that one. The other the one. The flat one, Joe. That one. Yeah, that, that one, one right one, there. The one that that. One. No, 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 no. Go down. <laughs> He's to your right. Nah, there you go. Yeah, there you one. go. It's good. I'm thinking that <laughs> you could see Chewy. Chewy's all pointing at <laughs> yeah, it. Chewy's like right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Chewy almost fucking killed him. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so they had yeah. you working like uh, With that thing right there, you like know? just fucking like yeah, so slave labor. No, sure. you have to have everybody. It was like every squad had like forty to forty five inmates, right? So you have to have that grubbing hole, and everybody would have to come up at the same time and hit the ground at the same time. And you had a songs you would sing out there, like you know, like slave. 
Yeah. You know, you'd be like one, two, three, and a four step. You I step, you step, everybody four step, and then there's this step. That's a banger know. right there. Yeah. <laughs> just like, and you just went like literally for fucking twelve hours singing this bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Guy, that thing, man. Like, what the fuck is this? Where am I fucking my ass? Fuck, these guys in horses and shit just looking at you. And no, then they, they're all strapped up and shit. Now yeah, they're right there waiting. And I, I was like, you know, the way I thought about it, I was like, you know, I got a fucking nice sentence. You know, like, what the fuck can you do to me? You know, like, what the fuck can you really do to me now? You know, yeah. uh, the, my next step is death row. So I was like, fuck this shit. I'm not going to do this fucking crazy crap. So uh, I told the officer, I'm like, man, I'm not doing this shit. And he's like, what? I'm like, I'm a city boy, man. I'm not no fucking farm boy, man. Fuck you motherfuckers from East Texas. Yeah. Fuck all you. <laughs> so He's like, two months in the hole again, huh? <laughs> Fuck y'all. Yo, so yeah, so they got out there and they whipped my ass. And then <laughs> fucking, uh, after I got my ass kicked, they, uh, you know, because they get the inmates that are going to kick your ass because they got certain inmates that fight for them. <laughs> so they get Jesus out there and they whip me. Dude. And then once I get whipped, they, the officer comes and handcuffs me. And then he throws me in what we call the black Cadillac. So this is uh, literally a cage on wheels, metal cage on wheels. Everything on this bitch is metal. Fucking hot. And it's black and it's hot. Fuck. And you're handcuffed and they throw your ass on that bitch. You're fucking burning. It's like a skeleton in that motherfucker. You're, and then you can't move because you're hog tight. So you're yeah. just like, what the fuck? And you're just fucking screaming and fucking just going in circles and shooting that bitch. You know, fuck, dude. Bro, calm <laughs> down, dude. Shit, give me the shovel. What the fuck, fuck man? That shit is give me the shovel. Change the song. <laughs> you know, like, can you guys sing something good? Huh? Put some Taylor Swift on, dude. Dude, right, dude, dude. that is fucking absolutely insane, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, and that's how it is in there. You know what I'm saying? So then after that, then I got locked up and I went to the hole for two weeks again. And when I came out, the officer told me, he was like, hey, man, you know, I want you to fight for me. He said, I think you, you'll be all right. You got a life sentence. He said, I can make your time easier. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's so, like, all right, all right, all right. God. So then he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, you'll get trainers and all that. So that's what he did. He got a, he got two trainers for me, you know, so they'll train me. And then I had like, you know, so I would eat a little bit of better food than the regular inmate on yeah. some other stuff because, you know, you have to be healthy and all that, you know, so they have to make <laughs> sure that you eat good and shit. Bring you in pizzas but and shit. That's how it was. I mean, they, but they would work you the fuck out till you threw up. Like I'll be throwing up and they'll be like, all right, go wash your mouth out, sis, and come back out here. <laughs> and they give me a, a, a hundred more goddamn burpees. And I'll be like, motherfuckers. Damn. And you do work doing out. MMA before MMA came around. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then when you get out there, they 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 gamble. So they're like, you know, the officer will come up to you who's like, oh, you know, uh, you think you can take her nine days on squad twelve? <laughs> It's like a six five, and dude. then you'll be looking. Or which one's Hernandez? Oh, that's that one right there. Yeah, I think I got him, boss man. Okay, because I got a good two thousand dollars on you, bro. Jail, UFC that's in jail, actually, you know? dude. That is. Did so you get paid fucked. with noodles and shit, or you what? Got, no? You got paid with cigarettes, you know. Uh, well, I do. I, I used to do dip. Yeah, it's crazy. Not that in I there. did dip, but dip was easier, to, you know, because um. With a dip, you know, you have a little thing of dip. You can break that down into like, uh, you know, I can't remember what it was. What was it like? I can't remember. What you, but you make fifty dollars out of the dip can, and so if you win, you get ten. So you got like five hundred bucks. You know, that's pretty solid. Like cause that's where that's currency in there, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's, cool. that's, a, that's, that's how you buy for. shit. Yeah. And then see, dip is the best thing to get because you don't have that cigarette smoke. Right. You know, so there's you no got, smoke. It's you fucking just put subtle. That bitch in right. shit, and so people buy dip like it's crazy in that motherfucker. Yeah, dude. There are five dollar balls. That's what it was. It was five dollar balls, and you get ten of them out of one out of, fucking out of one can. can. Okay. Yeah. God damn, dude. I, mean, I just had to what's, think. What's, what's uh, <laughs> one of like the craziest shit that you saw that you know you'll never forget? It. Well, I remember this young dude, man. Right, this, this young white dude. He he went in there and they raped him. They raped his ass and, and, and they gang raped him <laughs> in that bitch. So the next day in the morning, this fucker like literally. I don't know how the fuck he got a fucking knife from that kitchen, but he had got a knife from that kitchen and slit that dude's the slit like two, three dudes' throats. Damn, the, the, the ones who raped him, and then nobody fucked with that white dude after that. And that was probably the most craziest thing. Dude, I that seen. shit's fucking wild, dude. Oh my god. Okay, so I think one thing that people don't realize is that like, uh, there's a difference, right, between being in county jail. Like here, right? Oh, yeah. And then a difference being in prison. a state prison where you're miles and miles and miles and miles from nowhere. 
and it's just a small prison town, and you're in there with fucking shit like that that's going straight on. Straight killers. Oh, straight, yeah. Like, well, what I'm trying to say is that, like, here at county, like, they're not going to just let it's people. It's a daycare center. Right, it's a daycare <laughs> center. They're not going to let you fucking start fighting yeah. and doing, like, they're not betting $2,000 on you. Oh, no. But once you get to these prisons... It's a whole nother world, dude. Bro, you're, in a, yeah. you're in a different fucking world. <laughs> they, 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 they got you fucking know, trainers he, on his ass, yeah. Yes, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally a um, you know that's it's it's modern slavery. That's what it is, right? You know, and that's they're making money out for us, and they're private, they got the private, private prisons, prisons right. and everything like that. You know, and if a prison America. is self functioning, you know, they always talk about well, we're spending so much money. Fuck no, these people grow everything. Everything we eat gets grown out there in that goddamn field. Yeah. That pork that they come in there, we get a, a whatever kind of pork. It's them fucking pigs that we got out there that we're fucking raising and shit right. that, that are feeding that that shit, right? So, like I said, it's a modern day prison. It's you know, it's so they can get whatever their whatever money the government wants, yeah, right? right? And he's gonna do it off the pork guy, you know. Yep. That's okay. So at some point when you're in there, right, and it's been a while, is there some point where you lose all hope, where you're just like. I'm not gonna ever see the outside world again. Yeah, that, like that's it. When I when they convicted me, I thought that I don't already all there you right know? away. You right were away, like, I was okay. like, it's, it's over with, you know. But it's it doesn't. Over. It's 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 crazy because it's like um, you know what a persona is, right? Right. Yeah. It's it's actually a land term, right? And it comes. It means a mask. It's just that actor's mask. You know, the Phantom Ooh, of like the Opera. Zorro yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know what was crazy was, you know, um, I would have to wear a mask in prison and try to figure out what it is, you know, okay, well, I can, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I got this and this, and you put this persona out there so people can, you know, see you as, but then when you have a visit from your family, you know, you can be yourself. But what starts getting crazy is that when you're so used to prison life, you, you don't even know what to use your real self now. That's you now. You. That's you, yeah. And then you gotta put a mask on to go see your family Fuck. to show them that you're the emotion. old guy that you're not no more. He's already dead and gone, you know. Damn, that's crazy, man. Um, I was reading into it. What I want to know is when when did this uh, John Mimbella come into the picture? He came into the picture about uh, when was it? That's when I went to solitary confinement for beating up one officer. So it was 2006. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what did you say right there? How do you your breath really fast? You said <laughs> when somebody beat the officer, yes. I was like, "Who got what? fucked up?" What? That's how he uses timestamps. Yeah. You know, like, oh wait, yeah, when that guy, when that guy fucked up, yeah, yeah it was all yeah. six. That was all so, six guys. Okay, so so uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's just dude. It was funny because I was like, "Am I hearing this right?" And I was like, "Are these guys yeah. hearing this?" Like. <laughs> okay, so okay, so some crazy. So so people, well, for, for, for right. people don't know, John and Bella. Um, is a construction contractor, right? He married a, a your Lucy, yeah, his sister in law or something like that. Mm -hmm. My ex sister in law, and your ex sister in law, and he became uh, invested in all this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that that's what I was asking. When did he? What's come his last name? Uh, John Mimbella. He owned the Mimbella uh, yeah. Contractors Incorporated. Right there, that one. That one so that yeah, he up. he organized rallies and protests, and uh, even paid for bulletin boards up and stuff. So how <clears> how did that happen? How did you guys get together and all that? See, John was. Um, he had married uh, my ex uh, sister in law, right? And uh, she had three kids from my brother. And so one day when they were they were gonna go um, drop off the girls, my brother's kids at my parents' house, my parents were crying and all that with my sister because they had got a letter from my innocent project saying they couldn't help us because most projects back in them days they wanted DNA cases. If you didn't have a D case with DNA, you're fucked, you know. Right. <laughs> so. They were they were crying about that, so John was like, "Well, you know, let me uh let me look into this. Let me see what 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 I can do." So when he started reading the case, he was like, "Oh shit, this dude's innocent," you know. So he was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna get him out." So then my mom tells me to put him on the visitation list, and he comes there and he's all like, "Hey man, I I know you're innocent," you know. He asked me what happened at first, and I told him, and then he's like, yeah, "I know you're innocent. I'm gonna get you out of here." And you'd never met him before, right? Mm -mm. That was the first time I ever met him, you know. And I've already been there probably by that time. It was probably I don't know, ten years, close to like uh, ten, twelve years. Right. Yeah, I'm doing. And real fast, would you tell people in prison like, "Yo, I didn't do this shit," like, or did you not really tell them like, did no, it not really come up? 
like you know the 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 people from the hometown or like certain people that you get close to you tell them you know right. but you don't just really tell any regular yeah not like that. anybody that you're just yeah but with people are like okay. you know that you get tight with right you know, right the people that them. you might be in there that become maybe like your friends right exactly and you tell them like hey dog like you know I I'm was here me. but you know but isn't that I'm what innocent, innocent. But, and what did they say like yeah everybody's innocent yeah that's what everybody says no like everybody's yeah sometimes innocent. sometimes they'll do that and then uh, and you know. You know, because then they'll, they'll see how I was, and they'll be like, you fucking lie. You're lying, bro. I you're saw lying. you whooping this guy's ass. <laughs> lying ass, yeah. <laughs> Look at you. You're all fucking yeah, trained to that. fucking fight. <laughs> but so it was, you know, so it was, so they wouldn't believe you, you know, right. but you still had, but then you still have some of them that would be like, yeah, you know. Because, like I said, in there, I was a totally different person, you know, to who I am right now, like who you guys have seen. In there, I was a piece of shit, miserable motherfucker. You know, I mean, straight out. I was miserable, and I was a piece of shit. I thought I was gonna die in there, and my whole life was just nothing but that penitentiary. So I would, you know, I was just a dirty ass dude, just like the rest of the dudes. I was like, I'm, I'm coming up for the next hustle, and if I can beat a dude out of hustle, I'm gonna beat him out of hustle, you know, and, and the hell with it, you know, shit. Trying to make the best out of it, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you had no choice, you know. Yeah. And so it was, you know, it wasn't too, um, you know, I didn't come. I didn't start getting back into, you know, getting my heart back and shit until, like, when my when my baby boy was born. And then I had to go through a big-ass transition then. And then that's when I started, you know, changing and stuff. But, you know, my mind was really warped, man, into that prison. Like, even when John came and he told me, he was like, hey, I'm going to get you out. I'm like, shit, good luck with that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You had no faith in the system. Yeah, that time, right? like, mm -mm. You're like, dude, yeah, like, I gotta, I there's gotta, no way. Bro. My future is being buried in Huntsville with a prison number as a fucking gravestone, you know, right. shit. So that's uh, good luck, dude. If you want to knock yourself out, dude. So John ended up getting a lawyer for you, right? Mm -hmm. or, or he's uh, the Several one lawyers. <laughs> several lawyers, right? Where um, yeah. they, they filled out that... Uh, a right of a habeas corpus, right? Mm -hmm. That detailed the new evidence in your case. Exactly. So then they started, what they did was, at first, he hired an investigator. A private investigator. And then once he hired that investigator, yeah, they, they went and they started finding all this. And then they started getting the newly, and like like uh, Hernandez and all that stuff started coming up. And the, everything started falling into place. You know, they started seeing the storyline. And then uh, once they had it down packed, then that's when they were like, okay, now we can present this to, you know, a real attorney to put it into a real court. Right. And then even after that, we had to reamend it because, uh, you know, me and a couple other, or, you know, me and, and a couple of other lawyers on the case were wanted the actual innocence in, in that writ. I wanted them to actually put the actual innocence. But, you know, some lawyers are against that because to prove that it's a pain in the ass. Right. right. But I was like, fuck it. So, is, yeah, so in 2011, there was a court hearing where 33 alibi witnesses, false confession experts, and Jesse Hernandez all testified. Mm -hmm. It was Damn. called the evidentiary hearing. And so it's basically a trial without a jury. Right. And the burden of proof is on you. To not show to that state. you have the evidence. Right. Exactly. It's the other way around. This it's, thing. Thing. it's like doing right. court reverse. Right. <laughs> Which is something that, that, you know, if people aren't familiar <laughs> with how court proceedings are, uh, when you go to court for something like the state has the burden of proof, they yep. have to be able to prove that you beyond reasonable doubt did, that. did whatever crime is being alleged. Exactly. And in this case, you guys are saying, Hey, we have the evidence that shows that I didn't. we, uh, or I or Daniel is not the guy who committed this crime. And here's the evidence to, to base that on. Oh yeah. We even told him who did it. You know, we even said, Hey, it was this mother. Who right. Did it. <laughs> You're like, it's, 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 we got the wrong guy. And then he went in there and said, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course, dude. God, but yes. speak uh, English. <laughs> damn. Okay. So you have that evidentiary hearing. Um, at that part, at, at that point, do you start like thinking like, okay, yeah, like at that part, finally yeah. things are going to start working. Like I, I remember asking you where you, you were like um, saying like, I don't have faith in this system anymore. Like you had faith at once you lost it all. Now does that start come, start coming back? Yeah. At that point, you know, when, it, when I, when I got bench worn back to a pastor, that's kind of when reality, reality kind of hit me when they're, you know, that, when they're uh, tr bringing you back, back from to, prison from to prison EP too, County. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, at that point, I'm like, oh shit, you know, something's really happening. Cause right. even to get an evidentiary hearing, like it's hard. it's hard, you know, like usually they just do it through paperwork, you know, right. you never see a courtroom. So that was a big leap right there. And then, uh, you know, once I came back here and then we started going through the trial and stuff, 
you know, the thing that was the most killer was the wait period. Because after you present everything and you think you got a good case out there and then, you know, one month passes and then the judge don't get it and then the two months passes. But then you got to realize that the judge has like a million cases. So right. It's not like if he's putting all that time in your case. Right. So that hearing was in 2011 and you didn't get released until 2014, January 14th. Yeah, because, okay, so what happened is, so what this, what this judge does is he makes, the district judge is going to make a recommendation. The DA. Yeah, so when you go through that trial and everything, it's not even a trial for your life. It's just for the judge to make his recommendation to the courts of criminal appeals. And then the courts of criminal appeals gets the records. They go through all the transcripts, and then they make their decision. And you have a nine-panel judge, right? And they tell me, they're like, look, it's a nine-panel judge. Uh, Three of them are anti-inmate. They never go for an inmate, so we got to get majority. Right. And your percentage is less than one. God, God damn. damn. So Shit. It goes to them judges, right? And, and we wait like every fucking Wednesday is when they throw out in the in the internet, right? They throw out in their uh, their website, you know, which cases they heard and what the ruling is. So every Wednesday I'll come up, okay, with my name on the list, she'll be like, no. So like for a year and a half, Every fucking Wednesday, I had to call my mom and ask her my name was on the list to see where the fuck if I won, if I didn't win. And it was always, to this day, I fucking hate Wednesdays for that reason. <laughs> fuck like, Wednesdays. Fuck a hump day Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. That's fucking At every- least we didn't schedule this on a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I know. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm not showing up. Okay, so, so when you find out like they're like they're gonna make the recommendation right where they're like okay yeah we're gonna recommend the the recommendation they make is that we're gonna send this back to trial right yeah so when when he makes the recommendation when the judge makes his recommendation he's actually puts actual innocence on there as well okay which is big mm-hmm. which is real big real big you yeah. know and he did, he voted that you know he ruled in my favor that you know I not only did I deserve a new trial but that I was actually innocent okay but then when it went to the course of criminal appeals after they ruled him, you know, when they, when they did it, it, I remember that day I was, I called my mom and then she was screaming. She was like, you won, you won. And I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? So then she's like, you won. And I'm, and I'm like, what are you talking about? So she's like, on the, your name was on the list now. And it got granted. So I didn't know what they granted though, you know? So then my lawyer showed up and he's crying. And he's like, man, you don't. He's like, look, they didn't give us the actual innocent, but they said you need a new trial. And they said that the the judge had used uh, a wrong case for the thing. That's why they denied it. Some something like that. They're always gonna find some little thing. But some they gave us the, the new trial, right? So my conviction of a life sentence was all of a sudden thrown out the window. It was vacated. Yeah, it right. was the gone. judgment was vacated. Right. So then uh <laughs> once that happened, then I was like, Okay. So my lawyer told me, You don't understand. He's like they fucking ruled in an anonymous there for you. Every fucking judge ruled for you. He said, never in the state of Texas have every fucking Damn. judge Holy shit. ruled the same. Right. And But in your case, they did. Wow. Which is why they told you that's that 1% chance. Yeah. <laughs> and then, dude, there it is. You get everybody in your favor. So they got, they got to, I have a question. So they got to look, those judges, those panel of nine judges got to look at everything, yeah. like all the evidence. Tapes, so, all that I'm stuff. I'm pretty sure they're like common sense, like, yo, he, he didn't do it, man. That's I mean, for all of them to vote? Dude. Yeah. Dude, that is crazy. Yep. Okay, so 20, 2014. Oh, yeah. So 2014. Then, okay, so then we're, I'm supposed to go to um, my bond hearing on December because we got the ruling like November, October. And they wanted to release me for Christmas. But the DA as far as I knew that, so he did like an emergency family thing or some shit where so they had to That's prolong my oh, fucking court so the next one I'll get asshole. Right? Dude. I tell you, it's always like one oh. fucking bullshit. You get like a win and then you get a kick in the stomach, you know, yeah. throughout the whole fucking life. <laughs> You're like shit, I want this, but then they kicked me in the nuts with that, you right. know. So fuck. But yeah, but then after, you know, the next year, the following year, then they finally released me. And then that's when I got out. And How much was your bond? And that's another thing. So when I went to the bond hearing, right, we're, we're there, and they got all these cases, and then they're like, look, this bond is $2.1 million because, you know, this and this is a capital case, and this bond is $4.3 million. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, man, there is no fucking way I'm going to make any of these goddamn bonds, right? 
And then Joe Spencer gets up there and he's like, Your Honor, let me tell you something. I represent half these people on this list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So let's go over every one of these cases and let me tell you why that bond is so high. So at the end of the day, uh, the bond was at 50000 40000 PR bond and 10000 uh what they call security bond. So, that's, yeah. so then I paid that and then uh, the $1,000 and then the judge says, I want him out in 30 minutes. And yeah, they got me out in 30 minutes. Holy shit, dude. That is good. <laughs> and yeah. So they release you from the, the El Paso County Jail at this time, right? Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. That is fucking nuts, dude. Wow. And, like, what's, go- that, uh, and what's going through your head? Yeah, how was that like, feeling, man? Coming you, out. Finally, it was, it was you finally walk man. out, dude. It was crazy. It was the, this is a crazy thing. So they're like rushing me in there, right? The officers couldn't want me out of there in 30 minutes. <laughs> So they put me in the stall, and the stall that they put me in was the same stall that I was released at the first time I got arrested there. It was like the very same stall, and they got like fucking 20-something fucking stalls in that bitch, or 30-something stalls, and they happened to put me in that same, and it's, all of them stalls are empty. No Do you have your them, name written down somewhere right? in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, so I was mine. like, what the fuck? Isn't this some crazy shit? They put me in this stall. Fuck. And so uh, anyway, so I, I get my, um, I change out. And then they're taking me down the elevator. Everything, the hallways, everything looks like a fucking maze, you know? And then I fucking see my brother-in-law pops up. And he's like, hey, come on, come on. And then I get outside and they open the doors. And I'm kind of like scared because I'm thinking, nah, these fucking dudes are going to tackle me down, you know? I've been like that. Y'all paranoid. It's like it's almost too good to be true. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, we're just joking, you know? (laughs) Damn it, man. She gets me hurt. As soon as you step out. Like, hey, just kidding. They just pull you back uh, in. Like, get out of here. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was dude. like, fucking. So I was like a little stressed a bit, right? But then I get out there and then I get hit with all these smells, right? Like the fucking street, fucking the way it smells. Nasty you know, the, shit. I mean, shit, but you know, you haven't smelled in a long time. It don't right. smell nasty. You know, it's like, no, yeah, it's just, it's, it's like, what is all this? Dude. All, right. the, all these different senses and shit, you know? Damn. Bird, bro. Bro, 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 I don't even know what the fuck? <laughs> you feel like you know, so I'm like freaking out on everything, and then um, we got this 1968 uh, Impala that John had gave me. You know, it's all fixed up and shit. And so I go into that fucking Impala. There's like 200 people out there, and they're all clapping. And I get into the Impala, and then we start doing. You know, we we took off from the county jail. And that's Damn. where, yeah, you see some like media, media video and pictures of you in the back seat. Yeah. You're like, yo, I'm yeah, out this my, bit. Yeah, that's my Dude, Impala. That is fucking He's like, crazy, you're going to get out in your Impala. <laughs> so um, I was reading and you guys, you guys ended up going to church that yeah. day. And then right after you guys went out for a steak or something. Yeah, we went to a steakhouse, right? And that's the crazy story too. Because so we were going to, into a, it was Great American. Shout out Great American. Right. Great place. Love Bomb ass place. place. We walk up in that sucker. And right before, like, I'm waiting, like, I stop where the door's at, and I'm just waiting there, and they're like, everybody keeps on walking, and they're like, they're turning around, they look at me, and they're like, what's going on? And I'm like, I'm waiting for the buzzard. <laughs> for your turn? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I'm no, yeah, more yeah, used yeah. to that boom, yeah, and then the door's open, the right? So I'm, I'm, I'm the doors, waiting yeah. for it. And they're like, there's no fucking buzzard. And then I snap. You know, I'm like, oh, fuck. There is no fucking buzzard. You know, we're fucking free. <laughs> and I'm like, we're fucking shit. free. <laughs> So then I get out and I go in there and I'm like, oh, and then that happened on Dateline. So they're recording the shit. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Then we sit down and then, uh, you know, they're like, you, you got all the silverware, right? And I'm like, I'm not used to that. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I tell, you know, I told Amanda, I'm like, oh, shit, man. They, they trust us with knives. And what I'm telling them, I'm putting the knife in my fucking suit. He's already <laughs> still in the knife. Oh, my God. And so she grabs my hand and she's like, no, 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 don't do that. And I'm like, and then I snap again, right? And I'm like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> and yeah. So I had to take it out. And it's just like moments like that that you just, you don't realize you do them. You just do them unconsciously because yeah. that's what you're used to. That was to your doing, routine, you know? Oh, that is wild, dude. And uh, yeah, so it was it was a kind of a you know it's kind of weird come getting out. Like when I went to a Walmart, it like when they were buying do- the order, it took me two hours to pick which one. And I remember <laughs> my man was like, "Just pick a fucking door. And I'm like, "I'm just reading everything." I'm like, "I got all the these fuck? options." Yeah, though. exactly. Like, yeah. I'm like, "Man, look at all this shit. This one got this. One. <laughs> this one smells like snozberries. <laughs> I could use this one on my ass, dude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. And you know what's funny is that. Like, and the moment you said, like, the sense that I was smelling, like, 
Dude, people don't realize like the little things that get taken away from you when you go and do time like that. Like, oh, yeah. dude, you don't smell the morning fucking coffee or the, your fucking the streets or the smell of a fucking Mexican restaurant down the street or trash stain or trash. Like little shit like that. It's bro. crazy how like little things like that and those are, that was like the very first thing that you're like. Oh shit! Like, How trippy was the technology mean? for you? Because I know like a big ass difference from like two thousand three oh, or two ninety three to like twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen, man, that was that was the, getting into technology was a motherfucker. But I mean, the internet was born like, it, right? My brother is an IT guy, right? Thank God, thank so, God for him. Yes, dude. he got me this Mac computer. And I don't know how many times I fucking got that sucker shut down. And I was like, fucking piece of shit, motherfucker. For like a, but I just kept at it, and I kept at it. And then, uh, yeah, before you know it, man, I was pretty good at it. Now, now he's on Facebook and TikTok. Now he's on TikTok and shit. Everybody's like, hey, man, like, I got this problem with this thing. And I'm like, I think it's your Wi-Fi, man. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's all pro now. Like, he's all IT expert. He's all IT expert. <laughs> well, IT supported Let me go bring up my tools real quick. Yeah, <laughs> well, what was the biggest shock when it came uh, to, like, uh, the technology that you saw? I mean, it was a big shock, but I mean, like I said, I the thing about me was I embraced it. You know, I was like, shit, I'm going to learn this shit back with and forward. Yeah, and that's what I did, and I put like literally, man. My first years, I would work, I would work out, work, and then come in back to the house and be on that fucking internet, just learning all kinds of different stuff. Okay, how do you do this? How do you do that? Like I tell you, I don't know how many times I call my brother and tell him, "Hey, man, I crashed the computer again." Dude, oh, imagine, <laughs> imagine watching like a fucking movie, yeah. dude. You haven't seen a movie since '93. Dude, yeah, yeah dude, he's like, dude, that shit looks so fucking yeah. real. The graphics, right? Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, you can watch TV there, right? But you can't hear it because the oh. fucking day room is loud as fuck. You know, you got everybody right, screaming. Right. It don't matter how loud you got that damn TV. Right, you can't everyone's hear screaming and you fucking got people playing, playing dice, dominoes, dominoes and slapping and the shit. table yeah, and, shit. and shit. Yeah, you can't hear shit. It's just like you just you just watching yeah, people mouth moving and shit. And you, you know what's crazy is that like uh like when you come out right like obviously there's a huge adaption and we talked about that. There's a huge adaption process, but the good thing is is you had people that were there for you. Oh, and yeah. uh, one of the the people, and I, we kind of glanced gla- uh, glanced over how you met her. Was you mentioned her was Amanda, right? Oh yeah. And so that relationship was is it, it, it's a integral part of like how all this happened and and how you were able to have this support when you came out, right? Not so much Amanda. Amanda helped me in the in the aspect of uh, of being an adult in the free world, right? Like keeping you like together in the like, sense, yeah, like you know what I mean. Keeping me and and, and showing me how to yeah. how to you know how to how to be an adult out here, you know. And and I put, <laughs> you know, I put Amanda through a bunch of crap in the, you know, because she was like, because uh, I was my mind was just fucked up. Like I remember one time we're outside and we're like in, we were living in Central. <laughs> We're in the you know how Central House has got the porches, right? So we're in the porch and you know this car is basing, right? Boom, boom, boom. And we're, and then all of a sudden it's like going real slow by the house, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? So then it like it's turning around, and I tell Amanda, get on your goddamn. Thing. And I thought, I'm gonna crawl to the kitchen and get me a knife. And I said, don't get no big ass knife because that's what you're gonna. I said, get me a little knife so I can stick and move. <laughs> Damn, stick and move, stick and move, <laughs> stick and move. <laughs> She's probably like. What the fuck? Because you know people are normally right. gonna get a big knife. Right, right, right. They think that's gonna, but fuck no, you don't need a big right. knife. Get a little knife where you can hit and go. Yeah, because then you you'll be there trying to pull a big ass <laughs> knife out this dude. Or just trying to go straight somebody, for the jugular. Right? right? Yeah, that's, that's true, crazy, dude. dude. Well, so, yeah, I've never thought. Of, I mean, I've never had to stab anyone. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, God bless. Now I know. But yes, if I, you know, if I'm ever in that situation, which baby, remember, <laughs> stick and move, stick and move, move. <laughs> short. We want a short blade in and out. Like the burger. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so yeah, I mean, obviously it was probably like a big adjustment for her too. Like, yeah. you know, dealing with like um, somebody that had been incarcerated for so long, there's certain things that, you know, will trigger them or that are, they're not used to that, you know, kind of you f- fucking start freaking out, you know? Oh yeah. Like uh, the first day it went with it, there was a, the, f- you know, my first day out, well, the, I guess it'll be the second day, right? When I took a shower in the, in the shower with her, I dropped the loofah. 
Uh oh, never picked and, it up. And, 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 and unconsciously, I, I grabbed it with my toes, right? And I was just like, <laughs> she was like, he didn't even bend over. He's like, you can bend down. It's fine. He's like, he realized I, I, it I, I, and I then he dropped I don't, it. I don't, don't got a dick. Right. I'm not going to fucking destroy you from the back. It's fine. <laughs> you can bend down. The vibrator's still on the right. bed. Uh, <laughs> He drops it. Crazy. He's like, you know what? Let me try. Okay. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> Let me try it, man. <laughs> it's been a while since I bend over. All right. So look, I say we do this because we're we're at a minute and twenty three minutes here. So this is good though because your story is fucking. It's, it's in depth. Crazy. It's crazy. It's unique. It's there's so many aspects of it. Uh, but what we'll do is let's take a break and then when we come back, we'll talk about the trial where where you were found uh, not guilty and I, like I told you off mic, I had watched. Like, I saw all the opening arguments. I saw all the closing arguments. And there's some things in there where when your attorney, Mr. Joe Spencer, by the way, he was a fucking animal as an attorney, dude. Right. This guy is a dog as an attorney. Oh, yeah. And there's there's points in there where he's hitting these certain lines. And you can tell the prosecutor. And he, there's even a clip where they pan to you and you're like... <laughs> All right, I like, like that's you know, why I didn't do it. Right, and yeah. it, it, he's with me. And dude, and, <laughs> and I'm the, cool, the cool thing about that is that like you can subtly see like the like that things are gonna work out in your favor. You know what I mean? And we'll get into that, but I, let's do that in the second half. And then on the on the back half of the second half, we'll do like I, I mentioned five random questions with you, okay. and we'll close out the pod that way. But let's take a break. I know we've slammed some beers, so let's uh, take a break. And uh, we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up your story that way. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's a good way to position it. Um, but real fast, for anybody who wants to follow you on social media, I know Joe found your TikTok. I don't even know my names on the social media. <laughs> so they, he's gonna, he, they got them all set up before I knew how to work. Okay, so now he, I know how to work. He's but. gonna pop them up and then uh, uh, just tell him, like, you, you're on Instagram. Where else are you at? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, What's up? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> he don't know what's up. He's on that OnlyFans stuff. <laughs> OnlyFans. Only no, no, it's just a TikTok and a Facebook okay, and, a, cool. and Instagram. <laughs> right, and it's right there, Daniel Justice One on on Instagram. I know your TikTok was a little different, uh, Daniel Viegas uh, six eight one. On you know TikTok. why? Because these fucking assholes. You put your name and you try to put the same thing they said. It's already been taken. Right. Like how many Daniel Viegas oh, seven four five? Like, hey, 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 my TikTok would have been like non guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was like your prison name or some shit. Like, is that what they call him? No, no you just. Put the- you put these. You put your name, and then they tell you it's been taken. So you, oh man, You're like, fuck, yeah, yeah, fuck dude. TikTok, dude. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> All, right. All right, so let's take a quick break. Episode one forty three, conversing with Chris and me to the podcast. Uh, thank you guys for following us on Facebook, liking us on Instagram, subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're gonna take this quick break, and we will be back with our boy Daniel. Uh, so yeah, we'll be right back. Let's go. Try to replace me, but bitch, I'm one of a kind You know I be speed racing up on the highway 95 Look, I don't give a fuck why these niggas hating on me Oh, wait, because I got your bitch tripping on me She said my love promethazine got her leaning on me Spanish mommy with that accent, bet she call me poppy Okay, yeah, she be hitting my phone like Alright guys, we are back from break Episode 143, conversing with Chris and Misa The motherfucking Paul Pass <laughs> We're having a good time, guys, tonight. We're chilling with our boy, Daniel uh, Viegas. He's in the building today. Give him another fucking round of applause. Bro, that first half was like an, over an hour, dude, but yeah. it felt good. And uh, and you know what, man? Cheers one more time, brother. Put cheers, it right bro. here. Put it right there. Uh, uh-huh. Cheers. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir, everybody. All right, guys. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Daniel, one more time. Let me just thank you again for being here today, man. Uh, like I said, we were really excited about this. I know, like, as a squad, we were all really excited to have you here. Uh, like, we did probably more prep for this episode than we've ever fucking done. Yeah. I don't think Joe had ever done homework before, and he did. And Chewy yeah. just dropped something. I don't know what it's he going did. going in the car, Chewy. <laughs> God damn. You too, Blue Spilling Beer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, dude, Blue spilled a whole fucking tall boy. Is it. that what happened earlier? Yes, yeah. dude. And and your boom. Bro, it took every ounce of... Of my being to not go over there and fucking do something to blue. Because hey, all, all, bro, are you that is, Chris is like, yes, that is extreme alcohol whatever. abuse. Chris is just acting like this because Daniel's being. Yeah, no, dude, like, no, I cannot stand that's by. That's prison talk, bro. I prison cannot talk. stand by. <laughs> hey, he broke one of the Jacob, rules on the Jacob. list. Jacob. Stick, right. and poke. Stick and poke. Knock him out fuck him. Bro. <laughs> Stick and move, doggy. Knock him out of fuck him. Look, look, look. <laughs> look, I cannot stand by and see somebody. <laughs> 
abuse a perfectly good Bud Light. I'm not going to let that happen, Blue. Knock him out and fuck him. Knock him out and fuck him. Knock him out fuck him. Okay? So, dude, I was surprised I didn't say anything because I saw Blue. The panic in his eyes. Dude, you're just like... I was like, God damn it, Blue, man. <laughs> wow. You know, that was the first time I've ever seen the beer guy fumble a beer. Yeah, yeah that was that. that was the first time. God dude. damn. We're hiring yeah. Chewy. <laughs> We're hiring Chewy. This is your chat, son. Okay. All right, guys. Our boy Chewy from Next Gen Sports is in the building, by the way. Give him a round of applause as well. Chewy hits us up with the I didn't even get a shirt. Cool. You'll get another shirt, uh, yeah, Joe. Joe, Chill you gave away like okay? 30, right? God bless. Hold on, Joe. Dude, he's just, mad, bro. Chill. Yeah, dude. I'm still irate, right? right and right I'm now. just drinking his Bud Lights, too. Yeah, Fuck you're it. drinking my Bud Light. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Okay. So, yeah. Chewy, shout out to you. Thanks again for the shirts. They're always fresh as fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, let's get into where we left off was we started talking about how, you know, you, you got out on Bond in 2014. Uh, you start adapting to life. You know what I mean? Life is so different now. Obviously, it's been so long that you were incarcerated and then you come out and uh what do you remember about like uh prepping for this trial that you guys were going to obviously this is going to be like one of the biggest most important moments of your life so what is that going for like going uh like what is it like being with your lawyers and going through all this stuff like talk to us a little bit about that you know that's how uh me and my lawyers became kind of like family you know Mm -hmm. was that uh we would you know every saturday you know, they would go to my lord's house, and you know he had like a little beach house in the back. So they would, we all go there. We call it the war room, and it had everything in my case, all these files, everything. Oh man, it looked, it, it was crazy the way everything was set up, right? It was they just like this room got all these posters. Just think about it; it's all about the case, all around that freaking big ass uh, little pool room, right? So we were going there, and then we would just go back and forth on everything. What about this? And what about that? And it was like a year and like a half of just constantly with this. What about this? And what about that? And (coughs) we're going to go here and different formats and different types of ways to fight the case. And it was just, uh, it was, that's, I mean, we were stressed out, you know? Right. You guys were a fucking NFL team working out a fucking game plan, bro. Yeah, we're like a whole team. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, dude. You guys, but it's crazy because at that point, you realize how serious, like, this attorney, Mr. Spencer, is about winning your case. Not only just saying this is how we're going to, like, appeal and this is how we're going to position ourselves, but we're going to fucking win this thing, dude. Like, that's like, you know what I mean? And for them to have that mentality, I'm sure it made you feel really good because you had had lawyers before that didn't really work as hard or didn't really have maybe your best interest in mind. Exactly. You know, and like I said, with Joe and them, I mean, that guy, man, was something else. I mean, everything. Me and him would go back and forth on that. He would always call me up about this and always call me up about that. So it was, you know, he became, you know, like a like a great uncle. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they become family, yeah, like you right. said. Spend and so he much would time drill with them. me all over the time. He's always drilling me. You know, so yeah. So Joe was amazing, man. It, it, like I said, it was just that Bob, but he you know, you gotta remember that, you know, this is uh you know, we this is a was a unique case for him too. Right. So you know, this is not something that you're always gonna have with a lawyer. Right. So that's what made it even more special. <laughs> yeah, know? like he's kind of motivated just as much to, to to work on this case. You know what I mean? Because there's, you know, I mean, obviously his name is on the line. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, he wants to say, look, like who I've represented, like who I've actually helped win their case. You know what I mean? It makes him look more prestigious in a way. Yeah, and not only that, but like I said, like all the hours and them nights at you know. Even when we had to go to like a restaurant and just go over the case and shit, you build the bond. Right? Yeah. And you kind of come like family, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's not so much a burden, it's just like a necessity after a while, you know, because you, you guys got the same goal and purpose. So kind of like we became family, you know? Right. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we always stay in touch even to this day. And that's something else you don't have with your lawyer. You know, once you're done with your case, you're yeah. done with your see case. See you later, dude. Yeah. I, I got your money. We'll see you yeah. later. And, yeah, dude. And it wasn't like that. You know, to this day, we always text each other. You know, you know I'm always asking John, uh, I'm always asking uh, Spencer, I'm always like, hey, hey Joe, <laughs> what about this and this and this? And he'll answer me back. Yeah, you know? you back. yeah dude, that's So dope. we're always, you know, we're, to this day, we always talk, you know. Uh, I mean, I just did. <laughs> Uh, I spoke at a college with him uh, last year, you know, okay. so we still do a lot of things together, too. Shortly, uh, I was going to say shortly before the, the trial actually started, the, the DA offered you an offer um, plea, right? Yes. And um, as I was reading, man, um, for those who don't know an offer plea, and I had to look it up, too, it, it means that uh, the defendant agrees to plead guilty while still maintaining their innocence, right? Mm-hmm. So that way, um, so that being said, the plea offer would have let you go free without a new trial as he would have gotten credit for the 16 years he had already served. Right. So I was reading more and I was thinking like, well, was, you know, what, what was your thought during that? Were you close to taking it? Um, and then I saw that you met a man named Jason Baldwin. Yeah. So Jason Baldwin is from the West Memphis three. And uh, that's a, big story where Johnny Depp and all them came. Uh, the producer from Lord of the Rings was part of that case. Right. Holy that. shit. But yeah, that's like big. <laughs> yeah, big dude, you got those guys fucking yeah. coming to support you? Jesus. Yeah, so we met, uh, you know, so me and Jason met um, through Proclaim Justice, who I'm working for now. Uh, he's he's uh, Jason is, is actually we're like family now. Everybody in there. But um, so that's what happened. Like we met and like I said, even them, they were so interested in my case that they would be coming over here to, you know, coming down here to El Paso just to come talk to me and be with me and, and, and go over the case with me and, and go over these different strategies. You know, they were they were they were a big part of my defense as well, you know. And uh like I said, you you build a bond with these people and you become like family with them, you know, and, and that's how uh, you know, they they got in the picture. And <coughs> they even started helping out financially as well, you know. They were putting in a shit little, a shit little. Cause I mean, every time they fucking, if the DA, what their strategy was, I mean, you gotta remember, we spent like I think like somewhere between like one point four million, God damn all man. total for the defense, and then the DA spent out of the taxpayers' dollars, I think it was like three point five million. Damn. Um, to prosecute the case. God damn, dude. And I'm, I'm not talking about all the time together. I'm talking about just this is last trial. Oh, right, right. Last shit. trial. Fuck. Just to take it to court in, in <laughs> the last what? setting in 2018. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. God so, damn. Millions of dollars are being so, spent. Yeah. Like to try the case and everything. And, yeah, so it, but, it was it was crazy. You know, I mean, took lie detector testing and uh, expert witnesses that you have to pay these expert witnesses, you know, twenty five to 30000 you know, for them to look at the case, for them to investigate the case, for them to do everything and then put the report out and then go to trial and testify of what their investigation revealed, you know? Right. They they charge you like 25, 30 grand, God. you know, and it's authentic, but I mean, shit, that's, you know, so you're talking about how many witnesses you got, you know, and, and it was, it cost a shitload of money. Damn. So and then to go over the tapes, remember when they're talking about the tapes, <laughs> you know, you're talking about a shitload of years of tapes, you know? So you're talking about, they said they had a whole floor in the DA's office that were just listening to the tapes that I was had in the county jail. So I'm like, what the fuck? So how many motherfuckers heard me phone sex with these women out here? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what are you wearing? <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh shit! Well, yeah, because because you're talking nasty on right. that shit, you know. Yeah. Like, and they were gonna, trying. I'm gonna, to- I'm gonna put a something in your ass and lick it out. And like, <laughs> God <"Wow."> damn! Look <laughs> around the chain. You're like, and then I, and then, then they're talking about putting it out in the news. You're like, oh man, that's fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get to release yeah, those on your OnlyFans, man. Because they were trying. <laughs> They were listening to see if there was any like incriminating time that you yeah, would incriminate, incriminate yourself. Yeah, and you know what? You kind of reminded me of that meme where it's like <laughs> your FBI agent and getting out like, the he's taking off the headphones and like fuck this, yeah. like <laughs> because you're talking about like smashing your girl just like this dude was. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude. So yeah, dude. Like you talk about the cost. I mean, the cost yeah. is one thing. And does that ever like make you think like 
like uh, that you're kind of fortunate in a way because there's a lot of people that can't afford to go through all that and have that that don't have that help and they're kind of just like you know what I mean? It kind of fucking sucks, dude. If you were think you, uh, about it, you know. Were you ever close to taking that Alfred that Alfred plea? Oh yeah, I was gonna take it. You wanted to take it, yeah, right? Yeah, I wanted to take it because, right. like, okay, so I went to my first trial. I got a hung jury, and then when I went to my second trial, they tried to offer me uh, two ten year sentences running concurrent, which basically right. means that you know you do it at the I'm same doing, time. I'm doing yeah, I'm right. doing both mm-hmm. ten year right. sentences, so it's basically one, uh, ten years, right? right? And I was under the old law, which is a one fourth law. So, which would have been was I would have been up for parole in two years, you know. And uh, I didn't take it because I was like, "Fuck that shit!" I didn't do it, you know. And so I took it to trial, you know, because I still had that faith in the system. And and I got convicted, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" So every fucking day. On my life, I will kick myself in the ass, and I was like, even if you're innocent, you should have took that fucking ten because uh, you could have been fucking home fucking a long time ago. Yep. You know, and before that ten year max came, I was like, man, you would have just been looking at ten years, not, not a life sentence. So when they came with this offer, my lawyer was like, you know, I don't want to tell you this, but you know, by law, blah blah blah, I gotta let you know. They want to offer you the Alfred plea. And I already knew a little bit about the Alfred plea. And so I was like, oh, oh, because a lot of times these Alfred pleas come with stipulations. Like, okay, if you get a misdemeanor in the next 10 years, you automatically get 15 years. Fuck, you know? dude. Yeah, shit they're like gonna, that. They're going to you know? fuck you somehow. Fuck, yeah. yeah, you know, so they always come with these little shit. So I was like, <sighs> so what kind of stipulation? And they said, no, it's no stipulations. You're getting time served. That's it. Okay, so right? this was a unique one. Yeah. Like it, it's like, hey, you're free to go if you mm-hmm. accept this. If I accept it, I'm free to go. You know, it's no But then you'd, you'd, you'd no be nothing. walking around still like you had been convicted for it, right? Yeah. Right, that's the, exactly. down, the that's downside. Downplay, yeah. right? Convict and fel- convicted felon for the rest of his yeah. life. Oh, yeah, and you know what? Talking about that, that's that's what exactly what I'm saying. Is like, So I would have been still a convicted felon, right? So... I was, but in my head, I'm like, fuck, I don't give a fuck, you know, because shit, I don't want to go back to prison. Right. And because I I changed, you know, and uh, just like I told Amanda and shit, you know, I told her, the thing I am, I'm happy about, I said, or that I have more faith in is that I know, you know, win, lose, or draw, when I go back to prison, I know I'm not going to last that much longer, you know, but within three years, they'll take me out. Because they're going to see that I'm not that same dude that I was before. And I can't be that same dude. Right. So I already knew what my face was. You know, like, I'm just going to have to fade it. You know, fuck it. There's no other choice. You know what I'm saying? So I had that, you know, I knew that I wasn't going to do fucking 10 years because I knew I'd get killed before then. But that's the thing. is like, you know, that you, you, you have to, uh, you know, so when they came to that deal with me the first time, right? And my Lord tells me that I'm thinking it's like that joke. You know, the guy's praying to God and it's raining and then the boat comes and then he's like, jump on the boat. And he's like, no, God's going to save me. And then the boat leaves and then the helicopter comes and he's like, hey, get on the helicopter. And he's like, no, I'm praying to God. He's, he's going to save me. And then the dude drowns and he tells God, hey, man, yeah. what the fuck? I, I, I'll have faith in you. And then God says, guy send you a boat, boat and a goddamn put, yeah. helicopter. So <laughs> I was like, the 10 years was the boat and... You know, and the Alpha Free was your helicopter, the helicopter right? Man, to get Damn, the fuck that's, up a good, out of Dodge. that's a fucking great analogy, bro. You know, it's amazing right there. So I was like, what? So I said, fuck yeah, give me that. So then uh, uh, Amanda stopped me. What's that? What's that? What's that noise? That ain't mine. Oh, it it's his. He's like, they're calling me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had that on off. It's his OnlyFans videos. Going on. <laughs> That's a fan going only. Hit the intro. Yeah. You, <laughs> said, you said six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but, you know, so I was, so when Amanda stopped me, she was like, just give me two days. I'm like, two days for what? I like, you didn't do the 20 years I just did. Fuck that. I'm going to sign this. Let's go. She's like, no, please, just give me two days. So then I was like, all right. 
So I told Joe, give us two days. So then uh, she got on the phone. Uh, she told John, and John and Bella called Jason and them, Jason Baldwin from mm -hmm. West Memphis 3, and then uh, John Harden from uh, Proclaim Justice. And they flew that same day from fucking Austin to El Paso. And so we're right there, and we're drinking, and then, um, you know, we're going over the, you know, we're, we, we locked ourselves in a room for like two, three days. And we're just like drinking and eating and just going through all these different videos of all these different people who didn't accept the offer plea and and got not guilty. And then the ones who didn't accept it and got found guilty and, you know, just back and forth, you know, just going through all kinds of crazy shit. And at the end, it was Jason Baldwin who said he was like, oh, man, you know what? He said, if you fight this, bro, because he was like. Because even Jason Baldwin, he, he took he took the offer. He took the offer, right? right? But he took it to save his friend because right. he wanted. He's the only one that wanted to go to trial. Yeah. But they told him it had to be all of them had to agree with it, or it was a no deal. And so all the lawyers told him that uh, Damien wasn't gonna be uh, wasn't gonna be able to make it. They're like, if Damien stays locked up another year and a half, he's gonna die, or like two years or whatever. He was gonna pass away because his health and all that shit, right? So. They said, if you take it to trial, he's not going to make it home. So he took the deal so this guy can get home earlier. So he can actually wow. see if he can Damn. save his life. Damn, that's wild. So what, you can imagine when he tells me, hey, bro, and, and this is Jason. Like He was like, hey, man, don't take the deal. This is for two days. We've been all drinking and all that <laughs> shit together. <laughs> but fucking beer is this shit. <laughs> that gray hair going dark. down. Yeah. Smoking a pipe and shit. <laughs> no, but we're like, you know, we're going back and forth. He's like, don't take the deal. And then he'll be like, but fuck, you got your kids. And then, you know, it's going back and forth. It was like, he was, even him, he was just like on the balance. And uh, anyway, so we were, so, but he tells me, he's like, you know what, dude, if uh, if you don't take that, if if you take it to trial, you'll fight it for all of us who couldn't. And I knew what he meant by that. Right. And I said, fuck, bro. It's like bet on the truth. I'm, uh, I said, fuck it. We're going to take it to trial after that. Dude. And we did. <laughs> dude, and that's such a, like, a, a pivoting, like, moment. Because if you could have said, you know what? Like, I don't care what all you guys are telling me. Like, I am going to sign this fucking thing. And we're going to move the fuck on with this shit. I mean, but, doing all those years. Right, right, dude. Right. But and then the that's the thing is that you were like, you know what? Like, let's just fucking go all in, dude. Like you're at a poker yep. table and you fucking push all, <laughs> all your, your fucking chips, chips exactly. into the fucking middle, bro. <laughs> yep. And that is so crazy, dude. That's exactly what I did. I like, threw dude. them all in the middle. I'm like, fuck. He's it. like, like he's either, either and a winner or like, like dude, right, we mentioned this. We mentioned this like way back, dude. Like the, the part about this being like a predetermined thing. You know what I mean? Like it's meant to happen. It's, oh, yeah. it's all well, it's kind of fucked up when you say it's meant to happen, yeah. but it's like it's almost like it played out the way that it should have. And you could have altered it, like, if you wanted to and signed that deal. But something in you was like, you know what, dude? Like, nah, man. Like, I didn't do this. You know? Like, yeah. this This is why we're still fucking here. It's because I didn't fucking do this. So, in 2018 is when your trial starts, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when you're kind of like... Now this is when everything's gonna fucking really go down, right? Yeah. I'm either gonna get convicted, and this is probably it, right? If I don't win at this fucking trial, I'm done. I'm cooked. I'm fucking yep. like you said. I'm dead in how many years? Two years? Shit, two, three years, dude. And then it's trial week, right? Yep. Your trial comes. Like why? Like what is that like? Like when you're ready to go, your attorneys are ready to go. Everybody's feels good about it. Like, what are you thinking going into this? And you're sitting there in the courtroom looking at these prosecutors that are trying to put you away. I hope they don't play any of those videos. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't find my fans only club. Oh, <laughs> fans only. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was, I was, you know, at that point, you know, I, I was in a, I, it's that I was. It's hard to say where, where you're at in that frame of mind because it, it's so fucked up with shit. Like, you're in traffic, right? And in a rush hour, right? And you're looking at everybody and everybody's pissed off because they're going to be late for whatever the fuck reason, right? And, I, and 
that's their only problem. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I'm dude. thinking like, shit, tomorrow, you know, after this fucking rush hour right now and I could finally make it to the house, tomorrow I'm still might fucking go to prison for the rest of my fucking dude, life. Dude, great <laughs> perspective, know? dude. So, so right you, there, you, yes. You fuck it. You know, it's, it's the way you think like that. It, it's, you can't really say what the, I mean, I was so fucked up when we went to trial that when, right when we like, okay, when we shut the case down, right? We my you gotta remember this is this is creepy too. And you're gonna freak out on this. So my first when I got convicted, we only put one witness on the stand. That was a marksman, right? And he he, he all he said was the way the statement was. There's no fucking way in hell that shot that he could have shot him because the guys are here, and then the statement has this guy shooting this way. So the bullet would have to go in a circle, and then you know come and get him. Oh, go around like in a yeah, in like a hoop, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some impossible shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I can't even hit yeah, that yeah. shit. Some wanted yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they Some saying, wanted <laughs> shit in the game. <laughs> yeah. where, he, where he just has to go with the gun like that, just bah. Uh, the corner <laughs> there. Oh, dude, this guy, I know exactly what you're talking about. Too many about. movies. <laughs> no, too many video games, son. <laughs> okay. But, you know so, yeah, I mean? go ahead. So, so, you're in that, you know, so that's how it is. So, you're like, what the fuck? And that's, you just, I mean, you got to fight it out. Fuck it. Right. And Ed. so I told my kids, though, right? Like, we're, after everything was done, I'm telling my kids, hey, like, I got each one of them separate. And I'm like, we're waiting for the verdict, right? The, it's already, we, we got the, we, we did the trial, whatever. We're, we're waiting on the jury to come back. And every one of my kids, I would speak to them one-on-one and tell them, no matter what happens, I'm innocent. And then I'll go over shit that happened and I'll tell them about shit in their life. And I did that with all my kids. And then the last one, I'm telling her, I don't, you're not, she was the little girl, right? Mm -hmm. She's four now. She, But back then, she was like, I mean, I think she, you know, she was like probably three, four months or some shit. So I'm telling her, you're not going to know what I'm saying right now. But I said, when you, whenever you die, you're going to have like a panorama experience. And you're going to understand what I'm telling you now. And I broke it down to her and I told her the whole story, right? I did that with all my kids because I know you didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> You never know what's going right. to happen in that trial, you know? Right. So it's it's creepy when you jump into that. So that's what I was saying. Like, I mean, we went to the first trial, and I got, I mean, the second trial, when I got convicted, we only had that one guy witnessing. Right. That's what I'm telling you, because it was like panorama. Everything was going through. It was, it was like if it was replaying from 1995 again. You went back in time and shit. Yeah, because right. it, 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 everything is happening the same fucking thing. And I'm right. like, how the fuck we're already in this fucking 2018 and everything is going down the way it went down in, 19, in fucking 1995. And then you're also in the same <laughs> courtrooms. You're in yep. the same fucking buildings. You're seeing people dressed the exact same mm -hmm. way. It's not the same judge, but everything, the yep. ambiance, everything is the exactly the, sec, the same. The same shit. 20 years have passed, mm -hmm. but all of that, it's, it's exactly the, same the fucking shit. same, dude. Yeah. Right. So, so I understand like, what yeah. you're talking so about. So you're like freaking the fuck out. You know? You're <laughs> right. like, what the you're like, this fuck? Is this, I'm back. this is going to come out. <laughs> this is going to come out the way it did last time. That's yeah. what you're thinking probably. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Because it's playing out the same. And then God, like, dude. Even fuck. after like, okay, the prosecutors, they, they do their case, right? Right. They put all their witnesses out there. And then my lawyer tells 15 me. 15 witnesses, by the way. Yeah. So my lawyer tells me, hey, man, um, I think we should go ahead and just not even put a defense. <laughs> <laughs> no witnesses, bro. No yeah. witnesses. He's like, we don't need no witnesses. And I'm like, what? And then like, yeah, we're like, we literally smashed them on everybody. Bro, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, like, yes, 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 I don't think we yes, put a yes. defense. And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, the fucking... The last time I went to trial, we only put one witness, and I got fucked with a life sentence. You're telling me don't put a defense? Um, <laughs> you know, dude, what but the fuck? I think what it was was uh, your attorney, Mr. Spencer, dude. And like I said, I told you, I watched all the arguments that were on YouTube, and some of them are 50 minutes long. Some of them are over yeah. fucking 30 minutes. I literally watched all of them, dude. That attorney, dude, he... Boss, yeah. the prosecutor in every way possible, bro. <laughs> and it's funny because, like I said, there is a point where you mentioned they called 15 witnesses, dude. Oh, yeah. The prosecutor in the state called 15 witnesses to try to convict you of this. Your defense attorney said, we all need one because everything that I've presented 
is enough to get you off the fucking hook. <laughs> yeah, and then there's said. one, there's one part where he's giving his ar- ending uh, argument, argument, right? Right. And he goes, "You know who wasn't here today? There's 15 witnesses, right? But you know who wasn't here today? I didn't see any of these investigators that were the ones that talking to you guys." And fucking getting you to coerce yourself into these fucking sentences where you're saying that you committed this crime. And the attorney goes, not one of them is here, dude. And they pan the camera to you and you come out and you got this smile on your face and you do this nod. You're just like, (laughs) because, dude, it speaks for itself, dude. And even like I can, I can. And then then he says like, and even even the prosecutor will be able to deny it or even. And then they, they turn the camera to her and she's like, yeah, yeah. Dude. And so, like, I think, like, I know, like, looking like a Sesame yeah. Street character. Right, dude. I know you <laughs> not tell you otherwise either. I know you're in that chair, dude. And you're like, you're obviously you're thinking the worst and everything. But when you see your attorney, like pointing those things out and you kind of feel the energy in the move and, and it, like in the room move. And you can see the prosecutors are getting frustrated. You can see that things aren't going the way they thought. And. I'm sure at that point you start to have like a little bit of hope, but you don't want to get so much hope because you ultimately know that it could still fucking be yeah, look at the, the first other way. Trial, right? yeah. Yes, exactly. And it's crazy because I see you sitting in that room and, you know, obviously you're, you're, you know, you're paying attention and you're seeing what's going on. But I also think you're kind of like, in a sense, you're like, at least for once, something is being done right in my favor. And they're actually explaining my story the way it should be. You know what I mean? And at that point, if it comes out and I still get fucking convicted, like, you know what? I don't know. This system is fucked. But at that point, I think you had some faith and I could kind of see it in your face in in a moment, in those moments. Oh yeah, I did. You know, there were some moments you're strong and some other moments you fucking second guess yourself like, fuck, should I have done it? (laughs) Should we have done this? Should we have done that? But you know, yeah, it, it was a lot like that. You know, but I'll tell you one of the best things about everything that happened was that, uh, you know, after all this, we went up against them for DA office. <laughs> and I remember we were doing, uh, they had like a debate, right? And uh, so we're there, and then there was the prosecutors that were in the case. They're there. So I turn around, and I see Butterworth, right, the girl? And then Montoya, he's going for DA, so when we're sitting in the in the in the room and they're debating, <laughs> they're all pointing to me in the debate. What about Daniel Villegas? What about that case? And what about this case? And so he has to answer to all that shit. This is the dude who was trying to prosecute me, right? He had to answer to all that shit while I sat right there free Ooh. as fuck. Just watching him. Damn. And then and then after everything was over with, right? I hit up the other prosecutor, the 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 girl, Butterworth, right? And I walk up to her and I say, Hey, Miss Butterworth, how you doing? Damn <laughs> It's like a Fuck you to the face man Like So Bro well it's cause Dude these guys That was the best You know and then, I heard that, that She had said I was a cop. Do you think they They know I mean mind you That they're, that's their job To prosecute But do you think that Or do you feel that They knew that You were innocent Oh yeah Hell yeah they knew They were just doing Their, their job right As they a were DA doing, They were following orders From yeah. Esparza Yeah dude And like in their situation, that's a very hard spot to be in because that's like, like is that morally like fucks with no, your no, morals, no, you know? Because it, it's not it's not a thing about more morality, dude. It's like this is your job, this is the case that you're assigned to as a prosecutor. Prosecute. And and, and you have to prosecute yeah. this case. I need you to use everything that you All learned at law school and every resource that we're gonna give you to get a guilty conviction sure. in our favor here. Yeah. That's the job of a prosecutor. Because that's all right. they want is win cases. The yes. more win cases make elections. Right. Exactly, dude. And so the thing is too is and like when when we when we you when you watch like uh their their case and you watch the way that your defense attorney presents your your case, it's crazy the night and day and you know the the people in the jury, they notice that. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So they, you know, Came out not guilty, and and I was uh I had looked up so many interviews with you about this, and there was this one that that uh, struck out to me because you said that uh once once you know you found out that you weren't guilty um you and your I guess your girl or whatever you guys walked out quick you guys just wanted to leave quick and then <laughs> you guys realized that you guys forgot the kids <laughs> at the courthouse. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> hey, gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Cause she, hey, I didn't even lie. Like we were like, we had this like long ass speech. We we're gonna do. We we're like, okay, if we come out innocent, we got this badass speech that we we're don't gonna thank these here. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, and when that dude said you're free to go, I looked at her. I said, "Let's get the fuck Yo, up. Fuck out of that here. Yeah, here. Yo, that speech. Fuck <laughs> that shit. And yeah. the kids too. Yeah. Yeah. The kids. Fuck the kids. They can keep the kids. <laughs> and then check this out. So I get into the elevator, and then when I'm in there, I'm with the prosecutor who was fighting my evidentiary hearing. He's oh. sitting in the elevator with you. And then so God I turn bless. around, I look at him, right? And he's like, how you doing? And I said, yeah, did you find out what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I, not guilty, son. Not guilty, bitch. I'm going to get the spit shot for your ball head. <laughs> he presses all the buttons when he gets out. <laughs> dude, right, on the third floor. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. So, and that. Did, and you that, see but how a shit comes around? Right. Yeah. Yes, dude. It's like, crazy. In, in, like, it's like a hit in the face. Dude. Right. Like, fuck you. Yeah, dude. And it's it's nuts because, like, you know, like, obviously, like we were saying, they're doing their job, right? They have to prosecute. But, you know, at the end of the day, dude, like, the truth is going to fucking prevail. Prevail. Dude, you know what I mean? Right, and, yeah. and, like, it, it did. And, like, I'm looking at this fucking still photo of you. Of, and it's your YouTube video. And it's, like... It's I don't actually Joe I don't think you can share this because these guys are will probably fucking flag it uh, because this video has millions of views. Um, but this moment where you're sitting there right and you're surrounded by your your defense counsel and they read that verdict and you hear that fucking not guilty dude like like right there they told me yeah, you to couldn't stand even up. get up like like you collapsed to the floor almost and like how like what was that like dude like that's just one of the most pivotal fucking moments in your life. You see, you see when I was talking to the lawyer, right? You know, I was telling him at that point because I had seen Ch uh, my little boy. If you see, you, if you look at like in the beginning, he's in, you'll see he's that, in the back, right? Yeah, he looks okay. like a little girl, <laughs> like a forty tuck. We had a hair real long. He's a little brown head, and uh, you'll see him right there. So I had turned around, I looked, and I seen him. And and he and I read the shirt right. It said "Free my daddy." I'm like, oh fuck. That's what that's what. <laughs> yeah, he's like, fuck. Ah, I was like, <laughs> and so you that, left him there, dude. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? So then I'm thinking to myself, damn man. So w we don't fought this right. And you can see like Jason Baldwin's right there. Too, yeah, in right? the back, in the, the back bat. too. You're right. He's right there with Amanda and everybody. See the guy that's hugging Amanda right there. Right. That's, that's John Harden. That's the other guy from Proclaim Justice that I was talking to you about that came down here too. So like all these people are right there, right? So then my my boy is right in the middle of all them. So it was like a contrast. Like I was like, I see my boy and I was like, fuck. Did we do fucking? Did we just go to trial for fucking capital murder? And didn't put a fucking defense for justice, or did we just jeopardize our fucking kids? Because now I'm gonna probably be fucked. Right. Exactly, dude. Yeah, you that's know? true. <laughs> And that's what was going through my head at that moment right there. And that's when you see me, like, I couldn't collapse. And that's what I was telling my lawyer. That's exactly what I told my lawyer, too. And you that, had that private detective there, right, too? <laughs> no, he wasn't even there. No? Shit, hell no. He was under a rock somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <he's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit. And at that point, at that point, dude, you're just, you know that it's it's all over now, this whole nightmare that. Well, know. when I heard him say um, verdict form B. Right. You'll see. That's when I kind of. That was before the not guilty because right. I already knew because I already seen the verdict paperwork. form A is. Is it, that it, different? It, that, yeah, that's okay. that's uh, guilty. That, that's uh, yeah, that was guilty or uh, I can't remember how it was. Right, right. The wording, the, the wording, the wording is. But it was like right. A was guilty and B was not guilty, right? And so uh, when they said, uh, or, oh yeah, it was A was guilty, I think, and and B was not guilty. So when they said order form B, I already Sheesh. seen the paperwork, but. The paperwork that they see, that you see, it's not, it's it's not like uh, they're just showing you. Okay, look, when you get convicted or you get not guilty, this is what it's gonna look like. So it doesn't have not guilty. It's just right. like a empty order form. Right. So I had read that. So that's what if you look at the video where he said order form B. That's when you see me kind of collapse because I already knew. Okay, that meant not guilty, right, even right. though the the crowd didn't know at that right, time. Right, right, yeah, right. I already had known. Yeah, because oh. you'd been through it, dude. So yeah. you already like that little cue is like. <laughs> B. Hey, yeah, we got it. We beat it. We got it. 
yeah. B for beat it. Bro, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Didn't, like, uh, honestly, like, I can't even tell you, like, that. That's just like, mind. That's mind blowing, dude. I don't know, like. What a feeling, dude. Well, I don't think anybody can put into fucking words that feeling, dude, because it's almost like you got a second chance at life. Oh, you, you know did. what I mean? You got, and not only, like, a second chance, but a second chance for you to do, like, something, like, better you know what i mean like yeah not only are you gonna be like out of jail like let's go fucking make the world a better fucking place now exactly like you think totally different like uh then like that's what i was telling you like coming back home now and even being on the podcast and everything where i told you where i felt like okay i got my little you know i got my little time off where you know it's just you know me and my girl and and Netflix, <laughs> a lot of Netflix, bro. Yeah. Netflix and chill, lots and, of chill, and, uh, and uh, a bunch of Snicker bars on the, <laughs> on, the on the bed. Go eat that Snicker bar, real quick. <laughs> give me a give me a flashback. <laughs> Sheesh, Mister Mister Panky Panky time. Right. Yeah. Hey, can you wear this beanie when you go in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Allah, uh, do be wilding out there, dude. <laughs> For real. Uh, uh, yeah, no, but you know, so it, it gave me like time to like, um, like I said, it, it, it had me watching all these different movies, man. It was just moving me personally, and I was like, you know what? It's time for me to get back out there now, and let's go do this. And that's when, uh, yeah. It was, so now that's what we're doing now. You know, now it's time to get back out there because right. I had to get away from a lot of things. Because even when I was free, you weren't really free, right? Like yeah, I yeah. had a curfew. I had all this bullshit. Right. I had when to you're go on through. on bond, you're not a fucking free yeah, man. Yeah, you still got all this yeah. shit you got to go through. And I shit. was also thinking, man. Like even even when you pleaded, you know, and you came out that you weren't guilty. I mean, just soon after we had this fucking pandemic, you know, like yeah. like just the the timing of it. I was, was just, laughing about it, man. I was like, everybody was like, it's so hard. And I'm like, what, what <laughs> you, you motherfuckers got it easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing time at your yeah. house? We can literally just fucking, it's, it's called Uber Eats, you know? <laughs> yeah, hey. Exactly. Yeah. What the hell's going on here? And, and I was, yeah, I, I freaked out on how everybody was freaking out on that. I, and then I work, I was working construction. So um, at that time, I mean, construction was like, okay, everybody else is shut down, but this is a time that we can finally, you know, so we had like empty highways and shit because not too many people were working. So we were doing a lot of work. And then right after that, I got into uh, the law firm. So even in the pandemic, they're fucking still prosecuting right. people. So, right. you know, the job was, it was like picking up, you know, we we're doing, a, I, I work more in that fucking pandemic than anything. Right. You didn't, you didn't have the fucking, yeah. you weren't like just chilling at home. You were, were you, actually out there still, yeah. still having to do shit. Were you still yeah. catching yourself singing those songs? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. All we need a new tape in the office. And right. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, uh, and I know this might kind of be like a weird question, but do you ever like have dreams or like, like feel like you wake up in the middle of the night or like, you feel like you're still in prison? Like PTSD or something? Like, yeah, I like mean, a little. Oh, yeah, you, you're always going to have stuff like that. Like, my, you know, like my girl, you see her, um, a Shani, I'll have to tell her, text her the picture. Like, she got a picture of me, and I'm like this, right? And she's like, you know, she took a picture because she's like, you always sleep like that. And I'm like, yeah, you know why? She's like, no. I'm like, because if someone tries to stab me, they, they're going to hit this before they hit my heart. God know? damn. God. So then when she, t- she would always take pictures of me. You see me looking like Dracula. He's in his defense like position. Yeah. Yeah. And that protects me from you, girl. Yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, but that's fucked, dude. That is so fucked. But I mean, yeah. There's a, there's always gonna be those little things like that, right? Yeah. That like yeah. kind of stick with you. Uh, in a way, I mean, you know? just, it just <laughs> and like I tell, I said maybe one day it'll go away, man. But I don't know. Sometimes. Shit. And then well, you do it naturally, you know. Right, right, right. I mean, dude, like you know, it's not like you were there for two, three years. You know what I mean? Like you were no. fucking there for the long haul, man. Like that's a fucking like that's enough to make anybody change the way they move, you know, the way they move, the way they think, the oh, way yeah. they act, you know, like goddamn, dude, that shit is fucking crazy. Were you like at the gym doing like uh, like prison workouts and shit? Oh yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no, no, no weight. Like, if you guys ever know Amanda, man, Mata, you know the mother of my children, you can even ask her. She freaked the fuck out of them. So this is big old black dude, right? And like his fucking arm was the size of our body. 
<laughs> a big arm. Yeah. Were, he's a huge dude. He was like 6'5", too, right? <laughs> I'm working out with him. And he just kept staring at me. And I'm like, what the hell? It was good, Holmes. <laughs> yeah, so I keep, Stick and poke. So I tell him, man, that's it. Man, Stick this, and dude just, this dude keeps staring. So I, I walk up to him, right? And I'm like, hey, you know, hey, this and this, boom, boom. <laughs> What you staring at? Take a picture. It lasts longer, man. Or do you want to suck me up or something? What? Hey, hey, hey. You know? What the fuck are you looking at me for, man? I mean. Like, what's good? So then. Uh, that guy's like, I'm blind, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> but, you know, I said, uh, you know, the way I tell him, Amanda's like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, you know, like, Jim goes quiet, right? You can hear the fucking pain drop and shit. <laughs> And then he's like, no, it's because I was looking at your workout and I was seeing, it was, you know, you've been locked up before. And then I come to find out, you know, he'd been locked up before. Then he became a professional bodybuilder right. or whatever. But it's crazy, you know, you'll see that. You, you don't, can recognize you, that yeah, shit, Yeah, because you don't notice that that's what we do, you right. know. I mean, And that guy took no offense after you told him all that shit. He's like, nah, man, you did some time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, he's like, you don't remember? I was, a big black, I was a black guy you beat up with the... <laughs> Bro, yeah. fucking Joe, dude. I don't know if you heard him right now. He tried stick to make a joke. He goes, stick and poke. Stick and, poke. Stick stick and move. Right? Stick and move. No, nah, he's talking about that stick other poke, bro. That's the, that's the one he used for the bitches, Joe. Stick and poke. Jeez. Dude, fucking Joe, son. And then, and then knock the him guy, out. Knock him out. Dude, <laughs> the good thing is, that, is or the funny thing is, is that Joe's like, I don't think anybody heard that. And like, <laughs> Like, we all heard that. Joe or me and Blue are looking at each other like, God bless, bro. He really said that stupid ass shit. <laughs> dude, that's so crazy. All right, dude. So before we're at 45 minutes here. So before we uh, get to the back end of the podcast, uh, we'll do some five random questions, which is going to be a little lighter. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we've been talking about some serious shit here, dude. I mean, you know what I mean? Like your story is like. It's one of a kind for sure, and like it's dude was a gladiator yeah, in prison, you, dog. And you have to talk about the whole story to get the whole story. You know what I mean? We can't, <laughs> we can't miss parts, dude. Did like, you ever lose a fight? Like tell the whole <laughs> story oh, yeah. to get the whole story. Oh, yeah. Anybody who tries to say, man, that, that they, they didn't lose yeah, a fight, yeah, they're full of shit. They never fight. In in, in fighting, I like just say me and you, right? Yeah, we fight right now. Say you can whip me right now, yeah. right? He, and then he, tomorrow. I whip you. Yeah. That's how fighting is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always unpredictable. unpredictable. Well, you know yeah, who hasn't lost a fight? Chris. Chris. Chris has never lost never a fight. Lost a fight bro. <laughs> never, <laughs> ever. And that's that's actually 100% true. He's never lost a fight. Because he's never been, been in a fight. <laughs> he's never, he's never I've been. never been in a fight, bro. Ever. Like I'm 31 years old, and I've never had a throw hands. Hey, fuck him up after the pot. Right. Knock him out and fuck him. 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 You're going to learn today. No. Or no, drop your beard, Chris. No, that your butt damn. light. <laughs> <laughs> Knock him out of fuck. <laughs> no, dude, but it's just crazy because it's it's I don't know, dude. It's just a, a wild fucking story. But is there anything like a? Uh, is there anything that you try to tell like like people that you talk to or like maybe something you would tell your kids about like how you would approach life differently if you could? Like, is there anything that you look back on and you're like, man? Like, I know, like, it was all about being the, the toughest guy, but maybe I shouldn't have confessed to fucking, or maybe I shouldn't have told somebody that I committed this. You know what I mean? Do you ever, like, reflect on that? Oh, yeah. You know, and one thing I always tell people, man, is that, uh, you know, even with the probation programs that we do in there, I always tell them, even if you, and this is important for people to understand, because this is where a lot of people get fucked. Even if you're not doing what your friends are doing by you being associated yep. with them people guilty by association you are yep. going to be found guilty and then when shit hits the fan you're the one that's going to get the worst end of the stick because everybody who's doing dirty is going to stick together to fuck you who's innocent yeah. because they'll be like we'll just use that because hey it's the first offender you know he's going to be lying on this motherfucker we'll put all the muleta on this motherfucker right. so he can take the rap and we'll be all right right Savage, dude. It's savage out there. Chris, but man, you gotta start fighting, bro. <laughs> yeah. You gotta learn Spanish because he's like, what's muleta? <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, for sure. Dude. No, like, he's all like, hey, green. He's all, I know exactly like, what he's talking he's about. Not <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, 
Like you're the one that's gonna fucking take the rap because like we've already been locked up. We can't if they if we go back, we're gonna get sat yeah. down. You clean record, you're gonna get a fucking slap on yep. the wrist, dude. And they're gonna be the one to get fucked, and right? Then, and then exactly. they go to prison. They're like, I never knew, and I'm like, Yep, neither did I. So join them. Uh, turn yeah. around and bear cheers. 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 <laughs> That's a fucked up thing to cheers to, by the way. Yeah. One of the worst things we've ever cheers to out here. But I'm gonna indulge. Yeah, I'm not writing a Chris anymore. <laughs> but I'm thirsty, so I never knew. I never knew. <laughs> it's wild, so I'm never riding in the car with Chris anymore. Uh, Fuck that. Yeah. No, and, and honestly, dude, it's like a I don't know, dude. This whole situation is just so like It's mind blowing to me. Mind blowing, so unique. So like uh in a way, like when when I when I when I have you here talking to you, it's almost like I can't imagine like you being the person you are like when you were in prison. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of hard to imagine that, but you've actually fucking been there and done that, dude. And that's fucking crazy to me. Oh yeah. Hey, have you ever has anybody I mean, come boy, and offered a movie like to make a movie? Dude, I was gonna say yeah, you deserve we, a movie. We, we we've done some um, shit. Me and you will make a movie. People, son. people people have came <laughs> by here and there, but we like. <sighs> If I want to do it, I want it to do it like uh, the way I want it, not right. the way somebody else sees it, you know? Because right. I want them to see what we go through. Yeah. I don't want them to just see, because people, you know, when they see prison, they see like American me and all that, and they see the stabbings and they think all oh, that's cool, but they don't see the part like when it's summertime and you're fucking butt naked in your fucking cell and you're like putting towels and shit to cover the bars up so you can fucking literally push the toilet, you flood the toilet. So you can have water because you're so fucking hot and Damn. you're just sweating balls, you know, in that motherfucking goddamn heat. Right. And these are the shit that people don't see or like when your fucking family member dies going to see you, you know, and shit like that. They they just see, you know, something like right, American right. Me kind of cool, but it's they don't all, see the other side. Right, right, right. In my series, that's what I would like or my movie. I would like to show that part. Right. That well, part I, that really <laughs> fucked you up. Yeah, dude. And that's like, it's what kind of I was trying to like get into is like, everybody thinks the prison as this way, you know, like, and it is for in some aspects, you know, but there's also the shit you like you're talking about. These Texas prisons in the middle of the summer, yeah. hot as fuck. To put bro. you in that fucking cage, you you're know, that hot as fuck. Like, <laughs> you're flooding your cell. So that we can have some water to fucking alleviate the heat for a little exactly. bit. And there's not only that, dude. There's so much other shit that you guys would do that you're just, I'm trying to pass the time. I'm trying to just get by. I'm trying oh, to yeah. live, bro. That's like the shit nobody would ever see. But it's, I, I like that the fact that you're like, I want to tell that side of it. Yeah. And that, cause that's the side that people don't see. They just right. see the cool side. And know? that's the realest side. That's uh -huh. the fucking everyday, like being in prison side of that shit. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? And what's crazy now is like I don't know if you've seen, but now like in prison they have cell phones. Oh like, yeah, everybody's got a cell phone. A TV and they're 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 these guys are shit. taking TikTok. They're doing the TikToks. Are COVID COVID there, relief. They're COVID relief. Like, dude, they got one out there for a thousand inmates. Can you believe that? Oh shit. Yeah, dude. Like, um, imagine the state of prison now compared to what you were going through. It's a whole another world, dude. Oh yeah. I mean, look. That's how I. I. I that's how I went to. I. I became a correctional officer. You know, it's because I went through the goddamn internet and it popped up because they need so much help right now yeah. because everybody was fucked for with the uh, COVID and all right. that, whatever. And uh, I mean, shit. Yeah, dude. dude. He was. That's I was just totally thinking too. Prison. He was. He was in there through like some crazy events. Dude, know, he was like there last time. The, you know, the Cowboys won a Super Bowl. Oh, Joe, yeah. why are you gonna bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Cowboy fan. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's been that <laughs> long. It's been that long. Right, making us look bad over here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so Joe, Misa, do you guys have any final things to say, like on the actual? You know, on the story, we're going to get into the five random questions right now. But like, well, I want some like, like, just what are your like closing thoughts on this? I mean, this story is like one in a fucking million, dude. Dude, um, once he told me you were going to be the guest that we were confirming, dude, I started doing, you know, looking at the videos and the story. I've heard about it before. You know, I remember it, it came out on the news and I was like, damn, it's crazy. But I never researched past what was on the news that you were not guilty, you know, and until uh -huh. this week, dude, I stayed up. On Wednesday yesterday to like four in the morning, just watching videos, interviews, and I'm just like, dude, this is crazy. Like, what is life, dude? Like, <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna get to meet him and like hear his side of the story because we're hearing stuff that's not on the news that you're not saying on other podcasts or the interviews. You know, you're telling us yeah. from you straight from the source, and it's crazy, man. 
it's crazy i was just i mean this this whole time and i think we i, I told you right now on our break is um it's how how the fact that you know how hard he could have been to even go the wrong way even getting out you know like you, you told me you you actually started drinking a lot you know during that time for this last trial but i mean to to get to a point where like i think i would have been so pissed off at the system you know like all the all the years that i lost and it's some of the most important years of somebody's life you oh, know yeah. your youth you know being a young adult and stuff like that so um for me it always uh, uh you know i'd always be thinking like man that's that's um that's a strong person right there you know i'm sure um like you said you know you, you became an alcoholic or whatever um dude i, I probably thought I, i'd probably kill myself at some points you know <laughs> that you know i that's just for me that's one of the most mind-blowing things you know after everything that you've gone through you know um you're still here and, and you're still doing what you're doing man that's crazy and, and you know it, it comes to that point sometimes you know i remember one time i was in my um i was in my truck you know and there was some things that was going going on because like okay Remember I told you guys that we take the, um, we went to trial, right? And that trial, you know, going through that murder case, it, it destroyed my, uh, you know, my relationship with Amanda. You know, it, it affected us. Even though we, we, we won, we had a shit little negative with it too. Right. And like it destroyed us. It like, it, it, it totally flipped the way the world was, you know? So it was like a win and a lose. It was like bittersweet, right? Right. And, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's something that, you know, people don't see is that they see the win and they see the happiness, but they don't see what it costs too. And so it's like, if you get something, but you don't get it all, you know, yeah. you thought at the end of the road, it was going to be like this. And right. then all of a sudden it gets, gets to the world and yeah, you did that, but fuck all the things it that costed you, lost, you this shit. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and, uh. Makes you think if it's worth it, you know? Yeah, you know, exactly. Because you're like, damn, was it worth it? Because you're thinking, okay, so I got this. And like I was telling you, when you get a job and you go in front of these people, you can show them. They're going to tell you, okay, they're going to do a backroom check. And they're going to say, okay, it says here you were, you were arrested for capital murder. And you can show them the paperwork and say, okay, yeah, but I was shown not guilty. That doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't they change. They accused you're you still, that still, you were a wreck. It's arrested. like if you're still guilty. Right. right. Yeah. So even if we would have took the deal, we wouldn't. We didn't take the deal. We're still here. We're, We're still in the, the same, same boat. Right. Fuck. But I think at the same time, you know? dude. I mean, like, <coughs> I know, I, I know you might feel that way, and it's you know, it's the reality of of how people view. Uh, you know, the people that go to jail and 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 are arrested for these types of things, but. I think in the long run, towards the end, you might look back and say, hey, you know, like, I didn't want to be labeled that way, even though, like, you're, you still can't get that job or whatever, but at least you know and you can tell your kids and stuff, like, I yep. didn't do it. Like, and you can look and say, right there, not guilty. You know what I mean? Because oh, imagine yeah. having to explain that, you know, oh, to your yeah. kids. Like, they get older and they're like, dad, what do you mean, like, capital murder, dad? Right. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, dad? <laughs> Like, dad, what the fuck? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, at least those conversations, you don't ever have to worry about. Yeah. Having. Yeah. And those you are can, important ones. Right. And you can say, look, no matter. And it's like if you were talking to your kid, right? You could say, no matter what happens to you in your life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it could it could always come out favorable. You know what I mean? <laughs> look at what happened to me. You know what I mean? And you give them that sense of, like, hope and faith, you know? But if it was the other way, it'd be a little harder to fucking express, like, how all that yeah, shit happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it also helped me out in life, too. Like, when I came here, you know, when I came back to El Paso, you know, I came back when, you know, uh, nothing but a pipe dream. And uh, everything started popping into place. Because right. that's how you do it. You know, you put what you're going to do into the universe, and then you just start working on it, and you know what's going to happen. Because you're doing it for the right reason. You Manifest not, it. Yeah. Right. And, and you're doing it for, your, for you know, for love, you know, because... Push come to show, I'd rather be in fucking Florida than over here. Right, right, of course. <laughs> yes, of yeah. course. So, you know what? It, it sends you in a certain direction, and when you accept that, and you're like, okay, it's going to send me here, so fuck it. I'm going to be here, so let me go ahead and figure out what. how can I benefit from yeah. this. Right, exactly. You know, then, you know, you know you're going to be all right. And that's what a lot of people fail to realize. They get in a predicament where they're not comfortable or they don't want to be in, and they're like, fuck this, I give up. But don't give up, man, because 
there's always a benefit from everything. You know, if you can just change the way you think about it. Right. right? Change your perspective. Positive. Change it up and think, okay, I'm in this position. Fuck it. I can't do nothing about it. <laughs> and I can bitch and moan. I can fucking whatever. It's not going to change it. This is where I'm at. Okay, how can I fucking get up from here? And the same thing with this, you know. I mean, I came to El Paso and um, I thought, how can I change it from here? And then so I started working on that. And then one thing that I realized, too, is that, you know, being back in El Paso gave me a back, uh, I mean, it gave me a lot of uh, uh, perspective and, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of things that we take for granted in El Paso that we thought, man, fuck this. Right. You know, you're gone and you come back, you're like, fuck, I missed that shit. Fuck, but the I traffic, the <laughs> yeah. oh, chicos, it nothing, it nothing in Florida, bro. The fucking traffic here's a breeze compared to Florida. Um, I was gonna Florida's ask you, traffic sucks. Yeah, dude, it's terrible. And then it's though. raining like fucking cats and ducks. You can't even see shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was gonna ask you real quick. Um, where do you see yourself in like 10, 15 years? You know, in in ten and fifteen years, you know, I'm I'm hoping, you know, I'm gonna be a multi millionaire and I'm gonna be in fucking Florida, man. There you hey, go. Hey, 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 there you, you go. Make it happen. <laughs> Dude, you can whole do full it, dude. circle, man. It's yeah. gonna, gonna you can back. fucking do it, dude. There's nothing to say that you can't. That's what you I'm hoping I mean? for. That's what I'm working on. You know, I'm, I'm gonna do that. You know, and I and I plan to, re, you know, stay in Florida. I love Florida. I just came here for my kids, but I mean. I love the beach. I've always been more, you know, beach type. And then the vibes. Yeah. And then, <laughs> the and then where I'm at, you know, it's it's like a perfect location. You got woods, beach, you got anything you want all the way around you. So it was just beautiful, you know. And I, yeah. I, I want to go ahead and go back there to that paradise. Hell yeah, dude. There you go. Give him a round of applause. It's a great, good shit right there. And then he'll call us up and we'll do another episode. <laughs> we'll do yeah, another Florida. episode off the beach. In well, hey, hey, yeah. by that time, you know, like you might tell me, I'll, I'll send the plane for you. Hey, hey let's go. We got the PJ. We got the PJ. God bless. Wow. I'll show you. I'll show you Florida. Hey, Hell yeah. It's amazing, man. Panama yes. City. And then the good thing about Panama City is a small city. Right. So you're not gonna have you're not going to like Miami. Like that. <laughs> right. yeah, you gotta worry about getting shot and shit. Okay, you know, there you everybody go. in All right, cool. Panama City. Can I wear this bandana out there though? Oh yeah, man. No, I mean, like, mama, I mean, hey, you gotta wear it with your shirt off though. Hey, 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 karate kid. Hey, hell yes. Hey, hell yes. I wanna see hey. some tits. <laughs> <laughs> you walk into Walmart, everybody got bikini. They're without no shirts. Chris can wear his bikini. Sandals, Chris, little two piece Chris. Yes, sir. Right. Like Chris is yeah. like, I'm just here for the beer and the bitches. <laughs> no, you don't want to see me in that two piece, son. <laughs> Looking deadly out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So. Obviously, we've had a fucking adventure here talking with Daniel. So, this was a fucking crazy episode. And, mm -hmm. it's, you know, we fucking gone like. Into some crazy shit, dude. But I mean, you know, we had to do it, and so now what we what we're gonna do is we're gonna transition here. Uh, before we end up wrap up the pod, let's do some uh, something a little bit light, something light. You know what I mean? We don't have to talk about you know breaking laws and prison and all this shit this whole time. So <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, let's do these five random questions. But before that, does anybody have the fucking time? Chewy, do you have the time? Does anybody know what a time it what is? What time is it? I, I got it right. He's got the time. 916. 916. <laughs> Close enough, man. But no, because uh, actually. <laughs> it's time for the five random questions here at Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Hosted by your boy, Chris Marcus. <laughs> Let go. Uh, Hell yeah. That's my jam, son. Uh, uh, uh. You ever heard this album before, dude? It's no. fucking banging, son. It reminds me of a 50s uh, game yeah, show. That's yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea <laughs> behind it. But, it. but honestly, like, and I'm being 100% honest, that's my favorite song ever. <laughs> right, right after it's Taylor Swift. It's got no right words. Taylor Swift. It's, <laughs> hey. Keep the T word out of your mouth, all right? <laughs> just to let you know, uh, she's not going to be performing at the Super Bowl. No, she girl. is. No, she's no. not. What? Molina just sent a... Uh, oh, Molina just sent okay, a, well, tell Molina to just fucking... I don't want to hear from Molina right now, okay? Out of my if he's fucking <laughs> telling me that Taylor Swift is not going to be at the Super Bowl anymore, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, knock him out and fuck him. Okay. <laughs> knock him out and fuck him. <laughs> okay. All right. Question number one. Can I get some music here? All right. Mr. Daniel, 
what would you say is your favorite either like candy or like sweet dessert of all time? Uh, cheesecake. Cheesecake. Ooh. You putting strawberry on that bitch? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you sure? Dude, you gotta, I love strawberry cheesecake. I can't do cheesecake, nah. man. Is it like, I can't do cheesecake, bro. Why not? I don't know. I'll take, I mean, one bite and that's it for me, man. It's what too the fuck is me, wrong bro. with you? It's a fucking cheesecake. Yeah, dude. I don't know, man. Cheese, dude. Bro, you fucking poured out a whole <laughs> fucking thing of sweet tea right now. He's like, it's too sweet. Dude, the what? The cheesesteak. All right, make, make a cheese. Cheese steaks. <laughs> cheese cake. Cheese cake. Cheese cake. Out of tea and I'll eat it. <laughs> out of tea? I don't think they could do that. Yeah, dude, they'll make it out of anything, right? These days? <laughs> okay. I don't Question know, put some CBD two. in it. Question, yeah, put some CBD in that bitch for sure. Question number two, Daniel. You said earlier that you're, you like to jam out. If you had only one band to jam out to for the rest of your life, who is it? I mean, one band, one band, one musician, band. musician, Artist. band are the same thing. You know what I mean? Uh, tool, tool, oh, damn, oh, solid. Wow. Jeez, yeah. What are you fucking like? I I haven't heard Tool in a long time, dude. Like, like I remember like they what? came, like yeah, dude. I haven't listened to Tool in so long, dude. You gotta get a knife. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, and Joe's words, stick and poke. Stick, stick and poke. Stick and poke. <laughs> Knock him out and poke. Stick and poke. <laughs> so Knock him out and poke him. So Tool's really the fucking, that's yeah, the top, it, top it, of the it, line? It'll be Tool, and for rappers, it'll be Mystical. mystical. Oh, oh, shit. That guy's in trouble right yeah, now. He's no? in trouble right now, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's in jail. No, no, he just got out. No, no, no he he's in jail for uh, some R. Kelly shit. Who, Mystical? Yeah, yeah Mystical, yeah. like, uh, raped someone, no? Uh, yeah, and he just got out. Damn, wow. dude, that is crazy. I can't my dick on, in my hand. Uh, they put him on a bond. Look, they, they put him on a bond like about a year ago. No, oh, man, it happened again. Yeah, I know he went back in there. Fuck again? It. Again, dude. Oh, man, that's that fourth one. <laughs> I'm still in his yeah. <laughs> Go dude, to Google because y'all That is sucks. fucking crazy, dude. All right. Man, if he's back in there again, that's the fourth time. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's crazy, dude. He's a rapper, dude. All right, question number three, Misa. Let's get some fucking music here. <laughs> Mr. Daniel. If you can only fucking visit one country in the world, right? If you can, if you have a plane ticket and you can go anywhere, you can go to any one country besides the United States or like Mexico. Like, let's say you have to go somewhere real foreign. Where would you go? Brazil. Brazil. Hey. Brasilia. Oh, what yeah. a, that's that's interesting. Why? What do you like? I know you said you're I mean, a beach I like, guy. I, I like beaches and bikinis. What? The <laughs> hey. Brazil. Bikinis in Brazil, bro. Right. Double yeah. cheeked up. I've never been there, but I've Double seen it on, on a Monday. I, 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 <laughs> on a Monday. On a Monday afternoon. <laughs> Joe's like, have you seen those Brazilian weather girls? Oh, my Shit. God. Better than the Mexican ones, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's another breed right there. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's crazy, um, dude. That's nuts, dude. Oh, look. There oh, it yeah, is. Look. Oh. Mystical faces life sentence following first degree rape. God bless. This what? is September 8th. Yeah, this was like two, like a few days ago, like twenty days ago. No, yeah, rape indictment. God bless, dude. That's but this terrible. happened in two thousand three, and she's uh, bringing it up now. Yeah, God bless, fucking. Oh, that's Lisa, the one. Dude. That's the case he's fighting right uh, now. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah. So he's probably going. To, he's probably just indicted on this. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. You think he did it? Huh? You think he did it? It's and don't worry about it. I'm flipping this yeah. shit. When I'm flipping you, I'm dicking you. This is how I do. I mean, <laughs> something like that, right? It's called shake your ass. <laughs> now watch yourself, right? <laughs> That's crazy. All right, question number four. Let's get some music here. <laughs> <laughs> bro, fucking, I don't know what you try to do right now. I'm, it's mystical. No, bro. I know, but it just it didn't sound like mystical. I know. I was like, I was like, what's going on, dude? What dude. the fuck? Damn. All right, sorry, dude. All right, question number four, Mr. Daniel. <clears throat> What is your favorite beer? I know you're drinking Budweiser right now, but if you had to choose between any any beer, what are you going with? I'm not really too much of a beer drinker. I'm Where? more of a Tito's. Okay. Oh, oh Tito's okay. Vodka. So like, what would be your like go to drink? Like, if you go to the bar, like, what's like, what are you ordering? Tito's, Tito's yeah. on ice. Tito's like, water. I, I'm more like you know Tito's and pine juice or Tito's with anything, anything that has Tito's in it. I'm gonna go for it. You know that's uh. In my pina colada, I want them with Tito's instead because I, I just love Tito's. You're a big Tito's guy. Tito's is good. And it's, it's not that's just it because like um, when I drink beer, I get bloated. Right. So do I. But if he's I been bloated. He's been bloated. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this way still? But if you drink like like liquor, right? 
you know, you just need like, uh, like just say, like you get a strong thing of liquor, right? Boom, you drink it. And then you're good. You're already getting, you know, you're already Feeling buzzing. Good. So the next one, you can just sip on it. You don't have to be chugging nothing. So you're not getting all bloated. Or Take whatever. notes, Chris. Right. Yeah. So you're just chilling. So that's what I'm, I'm always like, Tito's. But I mean, if it's going to be beer, it'll have to be either Budweiser or or, uh, or Mickey's. Hey. Oh, Mickey's. Hey. Hey, hey, I'm they gonna, don't. I'm going to take some notes right here, Misa. Hey, they don't make, they don't have the Mickey's on glass anymore. It's all plastic. Well, yeah, because they don't want anybody getting smacked over the head with that shit anymore. Right? The I mean, bottle don't different. Even break. I don't even know. Right. That shit don't even break, son. Like it bounces back. Right? crazy. You throw a brick in it, break, and that <laughs> fucking Mickey bottle never does. That would never break. Fuck. Fucking Mickey's, bro. Why do you make your bottle so hard? <laughs> That's crazy. All right, question number five, Mr. Daniel. If you could go back in time and talk to anybody in the past, like any famous person, who would it be? I was gonna say probably his cousin David. Look out in the week and see you're gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> Don't come over! Don't come over anymore! <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> No, uh, I don't. Uh, I mean, uh, Jesus, man, try to figure out the answer of life, because you know that's what we're all trying to figure out, right? That's true, right? How, how, yep. how Shit, life? that's true. Jesus, yeah, Jesus, yeah. but does he uh, even know yeah. though? Like, does I mean, he even fucking know? If you he's can't writing all these it, books, and I'll, shit. I'll tell him. If you don't know that, at least show him how to walk on water, man. God damn, right. <laughs> how'd you do that? Show me something. <laughs> Let me turn this water into wine, brother. <laughs> into Tito's. <laughs> Can you bring Tupac back, please? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, me. So I think you had a fucking. There was a question that you had asked somebody about, like. Would you cheat on the boys or would you? Where, no, where I didn't no, ask you, Adam. You, yeah. snitch, yeah. on your, snitch on your boys okay. or cheat on your girlfriend. Okay, bonus question. Go ahead, Joe. Would you cheat uh, cheat on your girl or snitch on your boys? Shit, fuck. I, I, my boys ain't got no pussy, man. They, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Knock them out and fuck them. <laughs> 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 in other words, you oh, stick and move, shit. buddy. Stick, stick and move. move. Stick, stick and poke. poke. Stick and, and poke. Right. And that they want to bend over, man. Right. Okay. Hey, whoa, yo. whoa, 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 whoa. No. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, fuck that. It's good. Okay. All right, guys. Let's get ready to wrap up the podcast here. We are at an hour and 10 minutes on the second half. That shit fucking flew by. Right? I told fucking you it was. flew yeah. by. And I didn't press record. <laughs> oh, shut up. Shut up. up. Shut up. Shut up right now. Or you'll get fucking... Oh, stick and poke. poke. Stick and poke. <laughs> stick and poke. Okay. Stick and poke. Oh, right, knock guys. me out first, dude. So we got. <laughs> we're going to get ready to wrap up the podca- podcast here. Uh, we're going to go around the thoughts, around the thoughts, around the room and give our final thoughts on today's episode. Uh, let's start with Joe. Hey, Daniel, thank you so much for taking time out of your, your schedule. I know you got your babies right now. Thank you for telling us your story. I'm, I'm really inspired. And, you know, you guys, thank you guys for, you know, having me here uh, you your story gives me hope that you know you got to stick to your guns and you know keep keep moving forward even though the world's against you even though you know especially this system is against you just keep going and the truth will always prevail man oh yeah good shit joe for sure good wow for that sure. was fucking beautifully Beautiful, said dude i almost cried did, did give him a fucking round of yeah. <laughs> God bless, Joe. Good. God bless. <laughs> so beautiful. All right, that's enough. All right. Okay, it's some final thoughts today. Yeah, Daniel, man. Uh, it was uh, it was great meeting you. Uh, your story is just, uh, it's mind-blowing. Um, and I had seen it on TV, and to have you here, and to hear the whole story, and to hang out, man, um, pretty crazy. Um, thanks again. Uh, you have five new friends now, man. You're more than welcome to come by and hang out anytime you want. Um, everybody listening, guys. You guys make sure to be safe, stay fresh, and stay out of jail, bro. Prison, <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. jail. Yes, Fuck. everybody should be staying. staying Don't drop the loofah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that loaf of secure. If anything, start practicing with your toes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> start picking shit up with your toes, just in case. All right, Mister Daniel. Uh, fucking uh, final thoughts today, man. Uh, I mean, hey, it was good to be with you guys, man. Like I said, man, when as soon as the old boy told me about you guys and I seen your show, I was like, holy shit, I want to be a part of this. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it was awesome, man. And thanks for inviting me, man. Oh, yeah, it, brother. It thank badass. you so much. I had much. a good time. Hell yeah, man. And like I said, uh, well, like Misa said, dude, you got five new friends in here. So anytime you feel, feel like you just want to hang, dude, if you if you don't have 
like to worry about your kids or anything for a while you already know where to find us and uh yeah final thoughts for myself man thank you like i said once again for being here today uh we were really excited to have you in here um and, like fucking blue spilled his fucking beer all over the place <laughs> How excited you he was. Here. like god damn you know what i mean you had us all fucking distraught and shit you know and uh but yeah dude it was great to hear your story i mean i already knew that uh your story was going to be great and i just wanted to be able to present it as best as i could because i feel like it needs to be told in a certain way and uh you know like uh what you're doing man and, and moving forward trying to help people that were in your situation get out that's something that you can't put a fucking price on because that shit's priceless and uh thank you once again dude for being here today guys chewy blue joe misa the squad hell yeah thank you all for being here one more time and for everybody that likes us on instagram follows follows us on facebook and subscribes to our youtube thank you all for supporting the fucking podcast Mr. Daniel, one more final applause from the pod before we send you on your way for tonight. <laughs> Guys, make sure you follow us. Like I said, subscribe. Brand new fucking episodes of the pod coming every fucking Sunday. You know yes, how the fuck sir. we do. With all that being said, guys, we are... Knock him out of fuck up. I get you tapered like a new fresh haircut. Put it in ignition. Now a nigga got his key stuck. Then he got amnesia. Holds down G's up, bitch. Ooh, hit me back with the.